from Phoenix, Arizona. It is the premier event in amateur baseball. It's the Dick Sporting Goods. Perfect game, All-American Classic. Downtown Phoenix, Copper Square. This is the future of the game. This is the 21st edition of this game. And oh, we're so glad to introduce you to the future of the game. David Ronsley for three decades, one of the great scouts covering baseball as players develop into pros. Hunter Pence, he was a great high school, college JUCO player, then an all-star, then a world champ. We've got the broadcast set for you. Thanks for being with all of us. David, there's a theme that you want to unpack right away, and it's that velocity isn't everything. It, it doesn't hurt, but you see pitchers now, a lot of them throwing hard, so they're now our new separators. It, yeah, it's, it's not not the big deal anymore. It used to be you throw 94 miles an hour. That was all. That was the end all. Nowadays, we had 55 pitchers at the PG National throw 94 miles an hour. It's not a separator anymore. We've got to dig deeper with pitchers, with spin rates, with projection, with command. But just to talk about this, I want to give you the high velocity guy for this game tonight and the low velocity guy. The high guy is Carson Wiggins from Arkansas. His brother was just got drafted by the Cubs in the second round. Carson's going to be probably hit 98, 99 tonight. He's going to be a 100-plus guy in another year or two. It's just what it is. He's an outstanding athlete. Now, on the flip side, you have Talon Bell from, from Haggerty High School in Florida, a little 5'11 lefty who's going to throw 89, 90, maybe touch a 92 or 93 in 32 perfect game innings in the last two years. He's allowed six hits and struck out 61. He can pitch. He is a Logan Allen of the Cleveland Guardians clone at this stage. Ooh, what a great comp. Hunter, what makes this game fun is there's 280 big league alums like Corbin Carroll who plays here. He, he played in this game. There's Lindor. There's Garrett Cole. There's Bryce Harper. There's all sorts of players. So you've eyed a couple, and who do you want to see out there? Who are you excited about? Well, there's a couple. I mean, obviously the number one position player, P.J. Morlando, he's got the really smooth left-handed swing. He's got really quick hands, and there's a lot to like. In 15 P.G. games, he's hitting over 500, and he has not struck out yet with six walks. Look at this. Not a big leg kick. Gets wide, gets deep, and he's just a pure hitter. There's a reason he's the number one, and it's exciting to see the future, and it's exciting to see him hit tonight. And then we got Aiden Harris. If you want pure hitter and then you want raw talent, this guy hit one four. 97 and he's the second youngest player here in this PG All-American Classic. He's only 16 years old. Imagine the projectability of that. This is that LeBron James that you saw in high school. This is that pure talent. He can hit it a long ways and we're going to be excited to see him and some real game action. That's a sales pitch. That's why we brought Hunter. He understands what he's looking at. He and David will introduce you to all these athletes. I'll tell them about their journeys. It's the PG All-American Classic right around the corner. The 2023 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's and by Rawlings, the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball Rawlings, the number one glove. Remain standing for our national anthem and welcome from Phoenix, Arizona, Arizona Kimberly, Kimberly Gunn. Gun. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say Spangled banner yet way o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. 
Well, what an incredible weekend it's been at Chase Field for these athletes as they look toward their future, as they have earned the right to be here, certainly with their play through high school, through travel ball. And let's take a look at some of the key names on this starting lineup. Dante Nori ran a 6-1-5 as our lineups are presented by our good friends with G-Form. That 6-1-5 came at Perfect Games National Showcase. Derek Curiel out of Southern California for the longest time was the number one player in the land. You see where he's ranked now. Bottomer went from 50 to 4. Connor Griffin, he reclassified. Samuel Richardson is power, pure power out of Mississippi. Kedar Ambide has continued to earn your watchful eye. Yeah, absolutely. He's got just such a good string, swing, strong arm. He uh, he performed. He won the home run derby, and uh, it was beautiful. South is seen behind him out of Las Vegas. Rayner out of SoCal. Caldwell out of Arkansas. Trey Snyder and Nicholas Montgomery as we walk you on down, taking a peek at some of these great athletes. Honor a first pitch being tossed out as well. This game is plugged into this community and being a part of school visits for the young athletes that were here. Underserved schools in downtown Phoenix. They gave it their time, they raised funds. Look, they've partnered with the Arizona Diamondbacks Foundation World Series hero Luis Gonzalez represents Perfect Game and the Diamondbacks Foundation. The D-backs Foundation does such a great job in this community and also in the state of Arizona. So what a thrill that it is. Our umpires, by the way, that will be working. Gonzo walks by them off the field. Jason Rogers, Eric Bush, Mike Bell, and Dan John Thorpe. There are our umpires. Some of the awards last night that we were honored to give out at Perfect Games Gathering in the Banquet. Noah Franco, David Ronsley, the Baseball America Pitcher of the Year amongst all those names. Somewhat ironic because he's not pitching in the game tonight, but a two-way prospect from Southern California who now goes to IMG Academy. William Schmidt can spin it, huh? Oh yes, he's the track man award, 3,000 plus RPMs on his curveball, and you will see him throwing in the third inning for the East team today. Connor Griffin is a talented two-way player too. He won the five tool award, but really talented two-way player, Yeah, right? two-way two player, primarily an outfielder. He's up to mid-90s on the mound, but as I said, you know, that's not a big deal anymore. What's a big deal is his power and his 6'3 speed. Flash Gordon is the, the manager of this squad. Nearly a thousand games on the mound as a pitcher. Flash, a big part of perfect game and the leadership, pep talk time. But when you throw that many games in the big leagues, certainly there is wisdom that you can pass along. Clint Hurdle is the leader of this team, longtime major league manager. Clint did successful work winning the pennant with the Rockies in 07 and taking the diamond defensively. The East team, PJ Morlando, leading the charge, a number one player in the land. There's Clint taking things in from his perch. There is not a better baseball man around, and he sits and scouts at Perfect Games National Showcase the entire time. Right there, watches all the athletes. And Chase Mobley takes them out, a right-handed pitcher that we have gotten to know through the years. He's a Florida State commit, Plant City is hometown, Durant High School. This was a player that was at the Select Festival, deservedly so. Those are the numbers and limited PG experience. Chase Mobley, David, let's start with your scouting report on this right-hander. Well, first, it's an ideal body, 6'5", 200 pounds, long and lean, plenty of room left. We should see 95 to 97 maybe tonight. Short little power slider in the mid-80s. He's always had a history as a strike thrower. Denny Wexelman, the fourth member of our broadcast team. She is with Dante Nori, who will lead off the game. Danny, good to have you back. Take it away. D, thanks so much. Dante, I know you know Chase Mobley really well. You guys play on canes together, but you told me you've never faced him. No, I'm not. So what's the game plan as you lead off for the West? Game plan, especially off the game, is to first pitch fastball and just unload on and see what happens. Hey, go get him, okay? Thank you. D? Dante Nori, thank you, Danny Wexman, runs a 6-1-5 Hunter Pence. He came here at this showcase, but what's happened with him is he was a finalist for the Home Run Derby. In that speedy frame, there's some strength in there. Yeah, he's definitely got some power. You can see it. You can see the projectability. You know, he's coming up hunting heater, looking to do some damage against his teammate. And you love to see that. You love to see the competition against friends. They play on the same team. And uh, I wonder if Mobley's going to throw him a, a slider first pitch and give him a wink. Oh, I like that. Give him a, <laughs> hey, give him a little off speed. A little Can you laugh, take me you know? back in Hunter's Wayback Machine? Could you have imagined at the high school age being a part of something like this? 
I, no, no chance. I don't think I was on the radar at all. But it's just it's come such a long way. And perfect game, I think, was just starting when I. I'm. I'm. You're going way back for when I was in. The, Still a kid. <laughs> and, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this, I, I'm sure these kids are, are. You know, got a lot of adrenaline pumping, and this is special. It's. It's really awesome. It's one of the greatest things to see the the young talent. These are the future big leaguers and the stars that all your whatever organization you like, you're going to see these guys in the draft uh, next year, and it's going to be. You know, it, it's fun to just kind of see that pool of the nation's talent. David, how does one scout an all-star game? This isn't a competitive game where there's bunting and there's hitting and running. How does one scout an all-star game? It's really a process that lasts three days. In this game, we're going to get little glimpses of everybody. We're going to get one inning from every pitcher. We're going to get maybe two at-bats from every hitter. But a lot of these big league scouts who've been here have been here in the past days to watch batting practice, to watch in and out drills and stuff and really get a better feel overall for the players. And the batting practice is especially important. Watch that in a big league park, you know, with all the exit velocities and the everything up on the scoreboard, all the advanced metrics. It's a it's a great thing for the scouts. Leading off this game is Dante Nori. He's from Northville, Michigan. Northville High School plays for that Canes national team. Jeff Petty is the head coach, and away we go. Nori tries to split the gap in left field, having just a bit of time picking it up was Noah Franco, but the SoCal native finds it. Oh, it's pretty tough up there, says Noah. Nice job. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of those fly balls that can, in a big league stadium, if you're not used to it, it gets caught up in the lights. He makes a good, you know, does a good job of staying with it right there. And he was looking for his pitch fastball, just like he, to, like he, like he told Danny. Uh, got his fastball, but just got beat. Beat Derek Curiel. He plays at Orange Lutheran in Southern California. He, for the longest time, has been near the top of the charts as it pertains to rankings. First fastball, 95 miles an hour. Curiel makes his home in West Covina, California. He's a Jay Johnson LSU commit. And he's the son of Rick and Linda. Yeah, the comp for Curiel has always been Pete Crow Armstrong, former PG All-American and now a top, top, maybe a top 10 prospect in minor league baseball. Armstrong, Crow Armstrong didn't come into his power until he became a pro and got strong. This is what we're waiting for Curiel. He's he's highly athletic, fast, pure center fielder, just waiting for that, that little extra 10, 15 pounds to kick in to, for the power to develop. What about a, a Yelich? He looks a lot like very Yelich, -y, you know, a young Christian Yelich right there. That's, a, that's an outstanding comp. 2-1 good fastball, 96 miles an hour from Chase. Curiel plays for USA Prime 2024 national team. Chased the winner last night of the Nick Aidenhart Award for overcoming so much adversity in his life as we see that fastball there. It was a couple of years ago that Mobley went through something that he never thought he would. And his dad is looking down smiling. In the year 2021, he lost his father tragically. He pitches with the inspiration of dad, and this is some inspired stuff. That is, 97 with that ride out of the zone. The spin rates aren't spectacular on that as far as analytic profile, but he throws the ball where he wants to, and that was the perfect pitch, the perfect count to get Curiel. So his mom, Kim, has been such an important part of his life. His sister, Riley, who's a, a great softball player as well. And it's the three of them now going through life together. A couple of years ago, Chase as he faces the dangerous Caleb Bonimer. One perfect game, stay the course award. In other words, just stay the course you're on with all you've been through, and he has. Bonimer, line drive, base hit left field, turned that one around immediately. That was a bolt, hustling on around into left field. It's a double. He homered twice at Perfect Games National Showcase. He pitches in right away at the class. Bonner, Bonner must be hoping and praying that he gets drafted by the Diamondbacks because he owns Chase Field after his performance at National. And first pitch, double down the line. Not the best barrel, but he put it in the right place. Oh, that's a beautiful bat path right there. He saw a 78 mile an hour curveball into a 96 mile an hour, you know, the elastic, you know, the, the that just nasty slingshot that Mobley's throwing out there. That's a beautiful at bat, not phased at all. What a swing. This is a reclassification. It wasn't too long ago that this man was going to graduate in 2025. He jumped up a class. Number two player in the land, and he hits it hard toward the middle of the diamond. Ranging, fielding, firing, and the throw is off the mark from short. That's a great effort by Bryce Clavon, but it will cost him a run as it slips on by into center field. 
It's a run on a miscue, an acrobatic play, certainly, by the shortstop, but the West jumps out on top. Yeah, and right there in some of these games, you're trying to do a little too much. Uh, this is probably a base hit no matter what. He tries to make the razzle-dazzle right there. And unfortunately, there goes the throw, and they're going to get a run off of that. But that's good hustle right there. You love to see it. These guys are hustling everywhere. Danny, what do you have for us? Yeah, D, you mentioned the reclassification. He's taking 11th and 12th grade classes, two science, physics, and engineering. He said, yeah, it is hard, but it's worth it. Outstanding. There's a couple of here. We'll introduce you to Cam Caminetti, a local product who also is reclassified. But first, let's meet Samuel Richardson. He's from Mississippi. His hitting coach, if you remember the Brewers and you remember Bill Hall, Billy Hall, as he might have been known, that's ah. his baseball uncle. And Richardson, a huge bat. This is huge power. He's a Texas commit. Yeah, and it's a kind of power that you don't, you don't see. That kind of power. Good. Driven toward left field, but the play is made out there and left. Had to jump in on you, D. Sorry about that. I didn't know if he would give it a ride. Hey. That's the kind of power we're talking about. A lean to the left, but the play by Franco. We welcome you back, Hunter and Danny and David and Darren, as we see the, the right arm of Levi Sterling, a talented two-way player, going to work. He will deal with our Yeti starting lineup with a two-way player at the top, and I mean football, quarterback, and baseball. That's Bryce Clavon. Owen Pano plays hoops and plays it very well. Orlando, one of the best players in the land. We already told you about Levi. He's pitching. Noah Franco, Aiden Harris, the metrics man who does it all. He's from New Jersey, Andre Madunio, the flyer in Mullinex, Johnston, Quezon, and Miles Bailey. Yeti presents the starting lineup. The best in the class of 2024. His name is Levi Sterling. Wears number 14 on that jersey. He earns this assignment. He's from Notre Dame Sherman Oaks High School. That's where Hunter Green went to high school. He's from Los Angeles, California. And David, he's a Texas commit. Yes, and much like Hunter Green at the same age, Levi Sterling, a two-way player. It's very notable to me that he's starting this game and is listed as a right-handed pitcher. He's been a little hesitant to, to declare himself a primary pitcher. To me, his comp is Shane Boz, former PG All-American, now with Tampa Bay. The first time I, any scout saw Sterling on the mound, they went, oh, no, son, you're not an infielder. You're a pitcher. And it was the same way when I saw Shane Boz back when he was 16 years old. But Sterling, he'll, you'll see some mid-90s. You'll see a fast, fast loose arm. And sorry, Levi, I know you want to play both ways, <laughs> but you're a pitcher. And the oh, honor of man, starting. The sting, the sting. The, the honor of starting first inning at a PG All-American game, I mean, that says it all right there. Bryce Claiborne's been waiting an awful long time for this, this talented athlete. Nice, his nickname, from Stockbridge, Georgia. This is a three-star quarterback. This is an incredible shortstop. Still is not committed to play because he'd like to play both sports in college. We shall see as he picks on a breaking ball, and it's a fly ball to center field. That's an easy chance for Derek Curiel, who's playing out there, the Southern Californian. And it might be part, partially Clavon's influence. There were football footballs flying all over the field, take field <laughs> yep, in, in yep. pre games before BP. There was a lot of kids getting warmed up throwing and running patterns with Clavon mostly doing the throwing. There's a youngin, and when he was a youngin, this man loved the Yankees, still does. His name, Owen Pano. He's from Poughkeepsie, New York, a great, great state level basketball player, too. Matt and Kate, his parents, as he goes to work. Mississippi commit, Ole Miss. A little two-seam dive on that pitch. I love hearing about two-sport athletes, particularly basketball, because it's not as common as football. It'd be interesting. I wonder if there's been some smack talk between Carson Wiggins and Pano about who might be the better basketball player. Go watch a Carson Wiggins dunk highlight reel on YouTube sometime. It's pretty special. All right, I'll have to check that out. I, I love seeing the, the, the high schoolers run and dunk and the athleticism of today's athlete. I'm digging that <laughs> changeup. That's just me. I like dunks, but I like back-to-back -back changeups. Huh? <laughs> I mean, he threw a first pitch curveball. This is You want to talk about pitchability when you got the Bugs Bunny. Yoink! That, is that a wiffle ball or a baseball? To have that in high school, that is pitching right there, perfectly located. And keep in mind, Sterling has not thrown nearly as many innings as probably every other pitcher that you'll see in this game. He's probably the least experienced in, in his lifetime innings. 
and he's got all these pitches already. The number one player in the nation is P.J. Morlando. His father served our country for two decades in the United States Air Force. He's a South Carolina commit. Look at the stats of what he's done at PG events this year. He was a finalist for the home run challenge earlier. He won Major League Baseball's high school home run derby in Seattle this summer. Yeah, and it was it was one of the best shows you could see between him and Aiden. Uh, I believe it was. Or wait, who was who was he, who was he up against? Uh, the guy who won it, Aaron Beatty. Aaron Beatty. And uh, what a what a what a it was like. They both hit 15 in the first round. They went they went extra rounds, and he just was gassed. And I think you want to see him in a big league at bat versus just swinging, swinging, swinging. But they were both just launching no doubters over over the pool. Uh, what a swing this kid has. He has a beautiful swing, a lot of confidence. When he won the event in Seattle, Samuel Richardson was up there, who's here in this game. Those two were the finalists on that day. But look at that Juan Soto kind of getting in the legs right there, David. What do you, what yeah, do you usually when you see a player this age who d doesn't have the stride, yeah. um, you're automatically thinking, oh, that you're not going to be develop be able to develop the bat speed. But he gets into his hips. You see hip shift. And, and he's strong enough, and that's the first time he has struck out this summer in a perfect game uh, at bat. Six, this is his 16th game. Wow, for Levi Sterling. Waiter, I'll take a changeup. I'll take two as a matter of fact. Just bring them. Keep bringing them. Lazaro Calera gets the rock and he rolls. A young man, they call him Lachi at home, out of Miami, Florida. Florida Christian High School, CBU scout team. His travel team, and he's a Miami Hurricane commit. And Danny Wexelman has a bit more of that story. Yeah, so you mentioned it. So he's a first American born. His dad came from Cuba, spent 90 days on a raft at sea in 2003, came over here. And he said his main pitch that you guys are going to see, it's a sinker. All right, Alex Reyes, big leaguer, taught him that just in January. That's going to be the main pitch you'll see from him, Deep. Good stuff. We'll keep an eye on that. His dad, Yosvani, his mom is Judith. His stepmom is Marlon. Those three are the ones that go to battle for this right-handed pitcher. David, quick scattering report. We got a little bit of his own scattering report through Danny. His words, well, what have you seen in him? Well, first, it's a big body, 6'5", 230 pounds, very athletic. But there probably isn't a pitcher in this group that has improved more in the last four or five months. He was early this, or late this spring, early this summer, he was a 90-92 guy. And he has just steadily gained velocity and without losing command. Um, you know, we'll see whether we see the sinker stuff, but he's a, a young man who hit 97 at PG National, so the arm strength's there. Let's see how it works again with the sinker. Yeah, and, and you can just kind of see the rhythm, the mechanics. You can see the work that he's put in. This is, you know, it's a, it's a polished high school pitcher from from the, the naked eye, and, and it's going to be exciting to see. You don't see, like, he's, he's efforting, but it's not max effort coming out. Kate Arambide, who won the home run challenge earlier that was presented by Launch Hydrate, gets his chance. This is a catcher. There wasn't much he didn't do at Perfect Games National Showcase. His exit velocity was 105. He threw 102 from the outfield, had a record-setting pop time of 1.7. He's a Texan. He's an LSU commit. And just in the last few years, we've had a series of outstanding Texas catchers. Blake Mitchell going in the top 10 this year. Year before that, Drew Romo was the top catcher in the class, also from the Houston area. And uh, Texas may not be the the state of big arms anymore, but it's going to be of the premium catcher. I'm sorry, that was a 97 mile an hour sinker to start things. 97. Whew. That's heavy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, 197 with an anvil attached it, it, to it. Yeah, it's a, he's throwing some bowling ball up there. That just and, it, and it, it's that big body and, and and it's not big effort. So it's it's almost like his body's not moving as fast as the ball's moving at you. Pretty impressive. This is a wonderful challenge for Cade. Certainly, high school coach at Tumball High School is Doug Rush. Kane's national team, Jeff Petty. The breaking ball stays high. He knocked one off uh, the balcony out there, the home run balcony. There's the championship. There's the derby belt. Ah, look at that bad boy. That's going to be a nice to take home, the home run derby trophy belt. He earned it. That was quite a quite a show they put on. Some of the swings, Hunter, you were watching from up here. Oh, yeah, and it was pretty. He was loose. He, look at that. This was the last one after quite a few showdowns and this one just squeaks out but well, that one went way back but the last one was <laughs> was like maybe and he took it down 
And the other one, a very close call. He patiently draws a walk, so Cade is on. Cade, the, the son of Steve and Nikki. I am on the Cade Aaron Beatty train. The, like what he's shown, it, the, the poise in the home run derby, uh, you know, he didn't ever seem rushed, even though it is like a fast-paced thing. That at bat right there. This is, you know, facing 97 sinkers and sliders. Uh, just the body language is in, 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 in impressive. Yeah, and the thing is, Hunter, is that the scouting community as a whole haven't bought into his bat yet. I've, I mean, I've bought in. Yeah, you have bought in. A scout, I mean, but. He, he went to Eric Coates and hit 500. He was at the 17U, hit over 500. He keeps performing. He wins the home run derby here, although I'm not sure that counts in the scouts' minds. <laughs> but he keeps performing, and it's like sooner or later, it's like, hey, he keeps hitting good pitching hard. He can hit. I've played a lot of baseball. I've watched a lot of baseball. I've called some baseball games, and he just he has that that you can just see the baseball instincts from him. He also has the power arm, the power bat. It's impressive. Ty South, the scene is impressive. He lines that one towards center field. The Las Vegas native Aaron Beatty may be doubled up, but the throw is off the mark. We'll introduce Ty as he trots back. The number one player in the state of Nevada and the son of Tip and Paul. And the great thing about Ty are the brothers. There's T and there's Tate and there's Trey. 18, 16, and 15. Four brothers, all passionate baseball players. And he's an automatic favorite because he's he's the smallest guy here, really. I mean, he's listed at 5'9", 160. Maybe he's 5'8", 5'7", 150. Um, but such a good player and such a high-energy kid. Harvard Westlake is the high school where the studies go on for Bryce Rayner from Simi Valley, California. Plays for that Canes national team. We love Jared Halpert, the head baseball coach at Harvard Westlake. The son of Michael and Lisa. Perhaps that bat behind his helmet closes off. You can see the jersey number on his back. All right, I got a comp for you, David and, and Darren. Jay Bruce right here. Look at the high elbow, left-handed. What do you got on that right there? Jay Bruce, hadn't thought of that. Look at the Jay. But, oh, yeah. Watch this. Oh, yeah. You got the big high back elbow, That the, the bat wiggle. That's a good one. Pretty breaking ball. Hunter, that's a really good one. It's. I remember being able to read the Bruce on the back of his jersey from that center field camera, too. Absolutely. What's the benefits to torquing just a little bit, kind of showing that jersey? I mean, it, it, the thing is, is you got to find what works for you. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but these kids, you know, they do their practice, and, and all of us are built different. Know thyself is what Charlie Manuel used to always say. It's it hard out to second. Backhanded flip looking for 2-1 to first, and that is a double play. Clavon, who had moved over to play second base, flipped it on to Owen Pano, who shot it over to first, where Miles Bailey was waiting on it. A twin killing at the PG All-American. The 2023 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by New Balance Baseball, proud partner of the PG All-American Classic, and by G-Form, the most comfortable, protective guards in all of baseball because the best never settle for less. G-Form, go next level. And by Launch Hydrate, win the moment. Danny and David, Hunter and Darren, and this talented young man, his name is Christian Chatterton. Chatterton from Killen, Alabama, where he goes to Brooks High School. Plays for Jamie Crane at Team Elite. Auburn has earned his verbal commitment. Excited to put pen to paper coming up in the fall. The son of Judy and Ryan. And the siblings, by the way, the big sibling to McKenna and Will. This, David, is Christian Chatterton. Well, I got the scouting report on Chatterton. Not that I hadn't seen him before, but from his dad this morning. And his dad really emphasized his changeup. Said he's gained three or four miles an hour on the fastball just this summer. But this changeup is still his best pitch. And what I love about him is he's a strike thrower. I mean, we've seen a lot of strikes already in the first inning and a half of this game. And Chatterton is a pure strike thrower, over 70% strikes in PG play this summer. He's enjoyed making Alabama his home. About a decade ago, his family moved from Pennsylvania to Alabama. He said at that age, when he was younger, it was a challenge, left baseball behind, a coach who had shaped his life. At a very young man, he always keeps his touch with Coach Shives, Mark Shives. But he said, the best part for me is getting to know in hindsight that my faith matters and a new set of friends. And if I hadn't moved to Alabama, I don't know if I'd be here today. So a challenge as a younger man, it's become a victory for him now, and he's a PG All-American. Well, he'd love to hear those stories. And Man, it looks like he's really put in some work. The, the pitching mechanics are nice. I love I love to hear of all these high school pitchers. They, they all throw hard, as you said, David, but when the changeup is the pitch that they're excited about, 
that's when you know you got something elite, something special. And, and high school just keeps, the, the talent just keeps getting better and better. Meet Levi Clark. He's from Georgia, Marietta, Georgia, which is not far from Perfect Games' heartbeat at the historic East Cobb Complex in Marietta, Georgia. Goes to Walton High School and plays for Coach Pralgo of the 6-4-3 Cougars. Tennessee commit. And Clark is hitting clean up for a reason. He's been one of the big hitters on the summer circuit this year, hitting close to 500 with six home runs. It's a power approach from a power body. Ooh, look at the run on that pitch right there. In 95, Hunter. Yeah, from Chatterton. That was ball all the way, and that late run just catches the corner. Impressive location. Clark, the number two catcher in the land when you take a look at the ranking, certainly earning it. Son of Stephanie and Matt, two times All-State. And when you're All-State in Georgia, you've done something. That's a baseball heartbeat right now. At a PG event, Memorial Day, he won the MVP, homering three times. That's the power, David, you talked about. Good pitch. Well, he's not going to be able to use much power on that pitch if Chatterton keeps dotting the outside corner at 94. That's that's just one of those pitches you want to <laughs> backside single it, get a barrel on it, and, and let it do. let it go. Nothing to do with that, David. It's on the side of the baseball just a little bit, three and two the count. Chatterton speaks of his dad and the inspiration he has provided the way he carries himself. Basically hard work is what he watches his dad do, and he said, I try to mimic my father. That's a lively fastball at 96, and that's strike three. That's that same kind of run, Hunter. Yeah, that was just, that was challenge fastball, and the first two strikes didn't catch much plate right there. That caught the heart of the plate and got a big hack, but just overpowers him. That's a nice swing from Clark as well. Yeah, you're, you're on national TV in a big league ballpark. There was no two-strike approach there. <laughs> uh, you know, I felt like he had a, it, it was a big hack. He took his A swing, which is what they're teaching these days. But uh, that was that was power meet power, and Clark, Clark didn't win. From Downey, California, Noah Franco. That one might have got a piece of our home plate umpire. And hopefully Eric Bush is okay behind the plate. But Noah goes to IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida, so he is said goodbye to his family and takes on those challenges but he's all california through and through i mean he is a massive dodgers fan used to go sit in the bleachers and gather home run balls during bp and take those baseballs home because baseballs aren't cheap and he would go and gather and they'd bring them home and he and his dad would work out with the the baseballs that dodgers hit out in bp is that salvador that's one way to take advantage of a dodgers ticket that's a good call by you. I don't know. That might be tough these days. Not that he's that that old, but Derek Curiel is there. Makes it look easy in center field. But he's he's a California boy. Now he, he's on this East squad because of where he goes to high school. But he's California. One thing I just saw right there that as a scout or if I'm looking to recruit and, and what whatever is he just hit a lazy fly ball and he was absolutely flying around the bags to second, showing off the speed. And man, he can cover some ground. That was impressive. I love to see the hustle. Let's go. Aiden Harris, you talked about him, Hunter. He had won 480 in the home run <laughs> challenge earlier. He's the number one player in Virginia. Rennie and Adrian are his parents. Cuba, they call him. But he's a Virginia commit playing for FTB, TBT American team, the Phillies team. Yeah, this is his, uh, the just raw power, David. What do you see from him, and is it bats in live? I just seen the BP, and it's it's wild. Yeah, it, it, it's he's really opened some eyes because this is one of the, the things about watching players over a number of years. He was a festival player. We've seen him since he was 13, 14 years, and he's always frustrated me because his coaches have kept his swing very short and not taught him any power. And I'm thinking, here's a 6'4 kid who's this strong. You know, he, he should have a power stroke. And we finally seen it this year. It's the people who coach him, the people he trusts, I think basically said, okay, Aiden, you can start turning on balls now. You can lengthen that swing out. And boy, has it, it, it come quickly and so impressively. Two and two the count. Danny, a little bit more on Aiden, please. 
Yeah, two of the people that you guys are talking about right now, number one, Connor Watson at Driveline here in Arizona, and then someone we know very well, Luke Collier. He said he works out with him. He met him two years ago at Hank Aaron, and he said he hopes to be just like Cam one day, Lou's son, D. Yeah, good stuff. That MLB develops group, Luke Collier, part of the leadership there. He has benefited from that, certainly. Wow, that is an outing. Mr. Chatterton, he loves him some Spencer Strider. That's his favorite guy. I'm going to say Strider would like that too. Our Trackman Award winner because he can spin the baseball last night was William Schmidt. We'll see him work now. So he's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Catholic High School, where he gives a ton of credit to Tyler Naquin, his pitching coach there. Brad Bass is his head coach. Plays for Knights Nation with a couple of K's right by themselves. Knights Nation, Chad really, and he's a Mississippi State commit. That's a great shot of one of the breaking balls there. Danny, before he gets to work, what else can you tell us about William Schmidt? Yeah, well, you guys are going to love this. I talked to him yesterday, and he told me his freshman year he was five foot three. He said, I was okay at baseball. I was short and I was skinny. The summer after freshman year, I finally hit puberty. He said he grew a foot, guys. And his coach, you mentioned him, D. Tyler Knockan, believed in him, worked with him every single day, and is a huge reason he is where he is now. And he said, yeah, it was hard with the limbs, trying to grow, trying to figure it out. I still I still feel those growing pains sometimes, but it's amazing, six foot four, three years later. Yeah, and it's a great point, Danny. He had to go to a camp. He wasn't being recruited, David, really at all. Finally went to a camp, was signed up to go to Coach Lamonis's camp at Mississippi State, got sick, missed one of them. At the last minute, decided to take on the last one of the year. Lamonis saw him there, boom, offer going to Mississippi and that, State. I didn't know that, and that's great information for Danny about that growth spurt because I'm I'm the high guy on this guy. I love Schmidt. I love the ability to spring, spin the ball, and I'd like I would have liked him even more if I'd known that information before because he's still adjusting to his body. And, and and that's something it's tough to factor in is that they they are they're just growing into their bodies. A lot of these kids, and they're just so professional already that the kids are so polished these days you forget that like they they're still growing and there's so much more uh, for them to get used to and, and coordinated in their new bodies 20th player in the country Slade Caldwell and that frame the Corbin Carroll like frame is a ton of power he's so strong Slater aid his nickname from Jonesboro Arkansas plays for Southern California based BPA though the old Miss commit plays for Jared Sandler that's his travel team the Slater aid. I love the nicknames. Dang, he's got some fast hands, too. There's nothing about Slade Caldwell that isn't fast. He's twitchy. He's huh? so twitchy. <laughs> he's a high, high level football player. He's one of these athletes that I think would, would be good at anything. He just exudes that twitchy athleticism and so much energy. Yeah. So, so much energy. Hey, over 3,000 spin on that 81 mile or 82 mile hour curveball. I was waiting for somebody to notice the that. The spin doctor over here, 2979 Uncle Charlie right there. <laughs> Jeez. Just to remind the viewers, there are not many big leaguers who throw a 3,000 plus no, spin rate that breaking is, ball. That Very is few. insane. Schmidt against Caldwell. There's the breaking ball again over 3,000. Again, the football 5A All State player fouls that one off. An All State football player too. Here's the pitch again. I don't know the, how he fouls. Look at this, this pitch, off. but look at this swing. You could just see him tracking the ball, the eyes, the fight, like his balance and positioning the attack. That's a I, this kid can hit right here. I love this bat path from Caldwell. The Slater aid. Hunter, there's something to be able to spoil a tough pitch. Yeah, that's, that's a that's an at bat. That's a grinder. We you know, that's that's the stuff that like can make and set up big innings and and you got to spoil the, the tough ones to get your good one breaking ball up <laughs> and, and and also the more you pitches you see you just kind of subconsciously get in rhythm uh, but you can just feel kind of the 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 hitterish battle and the fight that he's putting in the batter's box right here I feel like if you if him and a brick wall got into a, a, a battle I think the brick wall would lose whoa 3,100 just under, and a nice job as that one sails wide. So he reaches the throw from Levi Clark. You can see Kate Brown at first trying to track that one, figure out where exactly it would go. And, and yeah, look at this battle. The spin doctor, uh, this one just a little too much. He gets that one in the dirt, but not even a hesitation, Number just two, flying down first Trace. base. The hustle this year coming in hot.
I love it. And there's not, nothing the catcher nothing can, can do. do. He was running straight down that line. That wasn't a running out of the baseline or anything. That competitiveness, you say that the, the, the competition doesn't matter. These kids are fighting tooth and nail. Looking for a breaking ball. He got himself a fastball, and it's popped up to the right side. The man at first is Cade Brown. The Georgian puts that one away. Great smile over there. Every time I've seen Cade Brown, no matter what in the hotel, batting practice, shaking ball, he's smiling. And that, that, that kid is, was born with a smile on his face, I have to believe. Having a good time playing baseball, baby. Nicholas Montgomery gets the call now. He's committed to play college right here in town. And Willie Bloomquist led Arizona State University. He's from Cypress, California. He's a catcher, the number five catcher overall in the land. His travel team, CBA Marucci. We get a chance to watch him work here, the son of Nick and Jackie. Just a nice, easy off the fingertips fastball at 94. Smooth 94, Darren. It did look very smooth. Talk about your change of pace. It's actually your fastball when everyone's thinking about that spin. Yeah, he's kind of pitched backwards early, and then everyone's sitting on the off speed, and then he sneaks the, the cheese by the rat. And all these all these players know each other so well. They play against each other in the summer. They play. They're all at the national showcase. So many of them were festival athletes together. They know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And I would say he's they're approaching Montgomery the way they should. He's a big six four power guy. He was my sleeper in the home run derby. You don't want to hang a curveball. If you're going to throw a hanger to him, he's going to bang it. And with that long six four frame, ninety four is probably going to work on him more than that that curveball. Yeah, getting some extension out with that frame too makes it look more firm than 94. Runner on the move, bouncing ball, just a step to the bag at first. And an easy chance there for Cade Brown. He just stayed firm with fastball, fastball, fastball that time. Sort of the opposite of Slate Caldwell where he went five straight curveballs. And, and you like to see, you know, the dynamics of like, I have multiple ways to get out and, you know, you mentioned like everyone's throwing hard. Everyone's kind of 94 plus. It's like what what separates you is is, is what's your deception, you know? And, and and you can just see that Schmidt has really good deception. He's gonna have to get a fourth out here because of the hustle from the Slater aid. Slater aid's out there at second. Well said, Hunter Pence. This is Dante Nori again, the Michigander. And Dante checks his swing that time. Didn't go around. Nori says it cleanly. These are his words. I'm not the tallest, so I had to change my body to be strong, athletic, and fast as I possibly could. But I also committed myself to eating right, exercising, and getting a lot of sleep. These are things I've learned as I've gotten older. Those are Dante's words. And, and it's incredible. Out of high school, these kids are, are treating it like professionals. You know, already eating healthy, already focused on getting good sleep. And uh, it's impressive. It's just the, the dedication and the discipline, it pays off through and through, and you'd love to hear that. Hey, Diamondbacks, by the way, I asked him where he'd be in 10 years. He said hopefully playing at Chase Field as a major leaguer. Just thought I'd pass that along. Those are his thoughts, so who knows? Well, any team that has Corbin Carroll and Alec Thomas, two sub-six-foot PG All-Americans in their outfield right now, that's certainly in their model for the draft. I just thought it was interesting he yeah. mentioned that stadium. He's from Michigan. There's a stadium there in Detroit. Oh, boy, what a take. How do you take that pitch? I mean, maybe looking for it, but that was <laughs> a – that. Hey, let's, watch the, well, let's watch the break on this 28-plus spin rate right there. Yoink! And that that's close to a strike right there, 12-6-er. Took a fastball out of the catcher's mitt. We'll do it again with Dante. And you can see them all really late on that heater because they have to respect the, uh, you know, the good old Uncle Charlie, the hammer. Now, one thing Nori has done this year to really improve himself is a different approach to the plate. He he struck out a lot in the past. He struck out twice in 23 games this summer, twice. And we, we mentioned P.J. Orlando before, but these guys who can go and foul off pitches, foul off pitches, keep the at bat alive. You know, that's a skill. Wow, that's a better pitch than the skill. Little, little bit of comeback on that 95 mile an hour fastball. William Schmidt, as long as they're looking for that breaking ball, oh, that heat will play too. It is 95. 
Time now for our Loco Cookers delivery of the game. Loco Cookers, innovative outdoor cooking products built for the backyard. Hunter Pence, it's all those strikeouts thus far. I mean, and we've seen all sorts of different mixes. We've seen the change up. We've seen the high cheese. We've seen the sinkers. We've seen the curveballs. Look at this high cheese, the leg kick, the Spencer Strider, the curve, the spin doctor, and then the freeze. Hey. As we were talking about, when these pitchers of this talent are throwing strikes, you're going to get a lot of that in this game. The hitters have a chance, but it's not a huge chance. Yeah, I mean, in this game, the three years that I've been a part of it, it's been a lot of pitching dominance. If they're throwing strikes, this kind of power, it's it's tough. But the hitters, they, they have the home run power and the potential, and it's a, it's, a, it's a craft to be able to master, you know, being able to hit this 95-plus with off speed, and it's tailoring your swing. But it's fun to watch these at-bats. The kids keep getting better and better. And here's another guy throwing some cheese, David. Yeah, Car Carson Wiggins, who we highlighted before the game started is I think perhaps the hardest thrower and eventually a, a normal 100 mile triple digit guy. His brother Jackson uh, was picked 68 this year by the Cubs overall and is a regular 100 guy. He was picked that high even though he underwent Tommy John this year. His younger brother I think is a better prospect easily. His breaking ball is significantly better. You're gonna see a 2600 spin rate mid 80 slider from him. But again, part of the whole Wiggins family, Jackson was, Carson is, great, great athletes. And that, that is so important when you're looking at a young pitcher as part of the evaluation. I'll see your great athlete and raise you with one Andre Madunio, who oh. does just about everything on the field. He, too, is at IMG. He's a Jersey boy, though. 6'5", 215. He can hit, he can pitch, he can throw hard. This is big on big here, boys. And it's rolled to the middle of the diamond and into center field. It's a base hit. A base hit for Andre Madunio. He is our Oakley spotlight player. Oakley changed the game. Good to see what Andre Madunio has been able to do. Went after the very first pitch. David, tell us more about this man. Madunio is, is like you said, he's a huge athlete. Connor Griffin got the five tool award. It could have easily gone to Mordunio, who's a six five runner at that size, has been up to ninety eight off the mound. You know, huge exit velocities. And his whole thing is going to be how often he can make contact. That's very encouraging at bat, getting the barrel on a 95-mile-an-hour fast, 96-mile-an-hour fastball, lining it up the middle. Great at bat for the, the big kid. That one skips on by to the backstop as it's time now to get a chance to see Michael Mullinax, Mully, out of Kennesaw, Georgia. North Cobb Christian, where Coach Jimmy Keene guides his way. His travel team, USA Prime Scout team, Michael Mullinax is a flyer. He can hit as well. He is a Georgia commit. Yeah, one of the talented switch hitters in this game. Not really sure whether he has a stronger side. I think he gets a little deeper with his hands, left-handed, creates a little more length, but he's such a quick twitch athlete that he can turn around that barrel. He's healthy, too. He had some injuries last year. He had the battle throw. I know that frustrated him, the son of Trish and David. He's the baby of the family. There's Rachel, Richard, and Rose all in their 20s. Boy, he's got a cheering section. Think about that. All in their 20s older, and then watching him do this. Good breaking ball throw down toward third. Tag pop down. Boy, very close. And a nice effort there by Bryce Rayner. That was a rocket shot throw down by Cade. And I think he's a little shocked. The throw looked like it beat him. Let's see if the tag gets there. It's called safe. And... It's, it's pretty close. It could go either way. <laughs> but they're all kind of chuckling it off a little bit. Oh, it looks like he's pretty clearly out, though. <laughs> and Don Storp is our umpire at third. Rogers, Bell, and Don Storp on the bases. David, that was a nice throw. That was a beautiful throw. Rainer got the tag there. This is a man, by the way, that at PG National, that man catching, threw 90 as a catcher. Let me simplify it for you. Is that fastball is a really good one at 96. I'll simplify it for you. Go out in your backyard and go get in the crouch. And then come out of that crouch and throw a baseball as hard as you can. You think you can throw 90 from your fanny? No chance. You probably can't. Think about that. <laughs> no chance. That's and, impressive. And the thing about Aaron Beatty, I'm sure he's been asked to pitch countless times over the years. He does not pitch. He flat out doesn't pitch. Even with that arm strength, he's he's never he's thrown a third of an inning in 2019 at a PG event. He doesn't pitch. 
but he throws 90 from beyond the plate and 102 from right field. And There's some of those hitters, Hunter Madison, that one, they just don't like pitchers. You know, they don't like pitchers, they don't want to pitch. Why in the world would I jump to the dark side, he might be thinking. Well, he likes pitchers because he's catching. He just doesn't want to pitch, you know. It's a, it's a, you like, you love pitchers. You well, you know. have to. You're right as a catcher. You have to be their counselor, their guide. Yeah, you got to work with their them. They're, they're the occasion. most. They're, they're the most important. Like, I mean, I, the, the position playing was just more fun. If you ask me, it's a different craft, a different skill, a different game, and it's a you know you're, you're battling with them. But pitching and position playing, you can do both, but they're different skills. Tennessee's Brody Johnston is a special athlete. He plays for Power Baseball, the team that won the 17U WWBA National Championship this summer. Jesse Marlowe is the head coach of that group. Brody is a Vanderbilt commit. And Brody was also the most valuable player of that 17U National Championship. Drove in 18 runs in 10 games. It's crazy. That's crazy, David. I mean, what he was able to do, those three homers, I had the good fortune of calling the title game. It was a power team, congratulations to them. Runners on second and third. Ooh, that's a healthy hack right there. And he's got kind of the, the front foot open a little bit, uh, you know, clearing the hips. And he's got an opportunity to drive in some runs here with runners on second and third and nobody out. He's got Madunia at third, Mullinax at second, and a good take on a 97 mile an hour fastball with some dive. Yeah, I put some check marks on my lineup here. I was watching all the batting practice for the guys who had took really good batting practices right before the game who were going to come in feeling good about it. And Brody Johnson was one of my two check marks on this team. So he was seeing the ball really well during BP. Good take on a slider. That one skips in there. He's making Cade work a bit behind the plate. Come out, have a conversation. Wiggins, the son of Daryl and Lori. Flash Gordon will come out and chat with him as well. Dad played college football when we talk about Wiggins as he has this conversation at Northeastern State University. His dad's an educator. He's also a baseball and a softball coach as well. Both parents in education. Yeah, I'm going to venture a guess on Wiggins being a little inconsistent this inning. When you go out and you've got the adrenaline rate running and your first pitch of the inning, you're, you're working from the windup, you're just getting settled out there, and your first pitch of the innings lined up the middle. Now you've got to go to the stretch. You've got a base runner, you know, an aggressive, fast base runner, and Mordunio, it can throw you off your game, especially when you know you're coming in just to throw one inning here at a big league ballpark on national TV. Yeah, this is a great opportunity to show, you know, can you recover? Can you have some poise? You got, you know, just uh, the CNI single up the middle and then a couple of walks. You know, we know he throws hard. This is a great opportunity to prove that you can get out of a jam. Connie, Conrad Kaysan out of Lilburn, Georgia, takes a pitch just off the plate. Looked like he tried to frame that slider up, popped out of his catcher's mitt. Kaysan is a greater Atlanta Christian. He plays for Exposure, his travel team. Cody Church, head coach of that group. He is a Mississippi State commit, and he swings right through that one. Coming up empty that time. Yeah, and a, a nice pitch from Wiggins right there. He's still kind of not giving in, pitching at the corners right there. Fastball outside half. Has to box that one on the back end. David, he just turned, Conrad did 17. He was 16 up until August 7th. Yeah, one of the younger players here. We've got a couple 16-year-olds, but Conrad and probably the youngest seven or eight of the athletes here and he's had a great week here at Chase Field. He's really hit well. He's got a really live wire personality as that ball trickles foul. And Wiggins and Aaron Beatty looking to get this strike out. Aaron Beatty, you want to see, uh, you know, no more pass balls. That's kind of one of the things that in these games is, is really big. You can see the, the tools from Aaron Beatty, but now you want to see the catchability right here, an opportunity. You see them working together, linking up, though. It's fun to watch. I've always thought that that has to be very difficult for a catcher. You're just touch and feel, getting to know a guy yeah. right there. They're throwing 97 You're on the dance floor dancing and... with someone worthy of being on Dancing with the Stars. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep, yep. It's uh, getting the battery together real quick. Woo! Breaking ball right down the middle. Froze him that time. Kaysan goes down on strikes. Well, there's a big out number one, and the bases stay loaded. Yeah, yeah. nice breaking ball here. He went change up the pitch before, so two straight pitches away from that 97 fastball. And you can see Kaysan kind of froze up right yeah, there. Yeah, that was kind of the front hip slider. If it's a fastball, it's a ball, and it just front doors him, catches him looking, and that's out number one. Now get you a ground ball. 
There's a lot of presence in the box right now as Miles Bailey fouls it back. Tallahassee, Florida's his home. He's a Florida State commit, five-star Nationals, his travel team. Really enjoyed getting to know Mybo, who's the son of Kevin and Aaron. And the big brother to Tyson. He and Tyson are thick as thieves, those two. He's a tank, that's for sure. Kind of, you, you mentioned Ryan Howard, you know, the big the big first baseman left-handed. He's He's got a frame that can, uh, he's going to be hitting them out of the, the stadiums when he grows up. It's that one hard. Told the hole. It's a base hit for Bailey into right field. That'll plate one, possibly a pair. Flying on around with the slide is Mullinax. And Miles Bailey gets it done. And we talked about the big power, but there with the bases loaded, one out. You don't need the power. You need a yeah. barrel. 94 off the, the barrel for a clean single to right. Two runs. Yeah, a little finesse, too. Big body. Just takes a nice, healthy cut. And find, rolls it in right into the hole and gets himself two ribbies for the East. No more work to be done here in the bottom of the third. The East jumps on top by a score of two to one. Here is the uber talented Bryce Claiborne. Tanya and Ja, his parents, as we peek inside of that East dugout. Yeah, getting fired up. I, I love Claiborne's nickname, nice. <laughs> such a good, such a, such a good vibe. Bolts over the outside corner for a strike. Clavon said, so far, I've loved my visit to Clemson because they were prepared. They talked football. They talked baseball. I loved former Michigan coach, now Clemson coach, Coach Backich. Really enjoyed my opportunity to go to Clemson. Rolls that one to the right side. A step to the bag. That's an RBI for Clavon. Miles Davis over there at first. The Iowan makes the play. But Clavon drives in another run. It's 3-1. to one. And Clemson would be an interesting school for him because they do have, they have a history of having two-way football baseball guys. And a young man named Will Taylor, which is for a few years ago, who, who did go for two years. So. And, and both programs are exceptional, like great football program, winning national championships in Clemson as well, you know, competing. Uh, they had a great year this year. Backage is just an amazing head coach. Love that guy. It gives me a chance to remind everyone to download the Perfect Game TV app. Wherever you have a smart device and a smart TV, do it, because then you can listen to Hunter Pence Perfect Game College Baseball every week. Every week we're talking to college coaches. Get that Perfect Game TV app. We love that show. Yeah. That's what's fun. By the way, folks, I just want to do this. I'm going off script a little bit. I know Hunter has a teleprompter here for me, but Hunter Pence is passionate about the amateur space, David. It's fun. He's talking to. He's not a big leaguer stopping by. He lives in this space. Yeah, your, your interest in college baseball has always amazed me <laughs> because because to broadcast big league games, to come down here for the high schoolers and then have the, the love and the passion for the, the college game all at one time, that's that's taken on a lot. I mean, it's baseball. I, I love the game and, and all ages and all facets. And a lot of these college coaches are so much to learn from. And if you do get a chance, look at this little pitch right here from Wiggins gets the slider in the dirt but if you get a chance go listen to that interview we had me and Sutton had with, with Backich and he tells you some amazing things when he got the job at Clemson about how golf and studying that helped him learn about hip mobility and how he, he can get his players to use more force through the ground and uh, he created a, a really amazing offense and as soon as he went over to Clemson they had a great season so he's he really blew my you know, blew my mind with with the stuff that he was doing and teaching in, in Clemson. See, I told you. I told you, folks. Listen to that. Good stuff up after going down with the slider to Pano. But it was a big inning for the East. He grinds his way through it. The big hit this inning. How about Miles Bailey? Mybo getting it done. The 2023 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by Loco Cookers, innovative outdoor cooking products built for the backyard. And by Diamond Cast Plus. Get more hits with Diamond Cast Plus. Some talented bats for the West squad. We'll have to deal with Braden Krenzel. He's from Dublin, Ohio. Dublin Jerome High School, where he plays for Coach Drew Kirby. One of his travel teams of elite, Bo Jackson. Elite, his travel team, one of the many he has played for. He's a Tennessee commit. Travel coaches, Corey Valentine, and if you remember the great quarterback, Craig Krenzel. That's a name worth remembering. Well, that's dad. His mom is Beth. This talented right-hander who also is a varsity basketball player. David, scout him up, Mr. Krenzel, for us. 
it's a really, really loose, easy arm. If you watch the way his shoulder works, it's so smooth. His, his, his shoulder reminds me, of, when I saw CC Sabathia pitch when he was 17 years old, I was just stunned by how loose his shoulder was. And the first time I saw Krenzel throw, I thought back to that, you know, 25 years ago and said, that's the same sort of shoulder action that CC Sabathia had. He hides the ball very well, and uh, we'll see it here. And that shoulder works so loose and easy. Derek Curiel, the Southern Californian, lifts that one first pitch to left field. Easy chance out there, fighting the roof just a little bit, Conrad Quezon, but he stuck with it, and he makes the play for an out. We're taking a peek at that back, that wide back, that strong back of the Michigander, Caleb Bonhamer. David, how tough is it to come to Perfect Games National Showcase and homer twice in a showcase game? Uh, well, it's the first time it had ever happened at there the National go. Showcase, so it's that tough. Hunter Carnes, uh, who's an All-American who's not playing tonight, did it later in the showcase, so, so we got some power displays uh, at the National, but no, that was the first time and it was had ever been done, and they were no doubters. They were halfway up the stands. It was it was great to see. Plays for Ajay Vulameri with that artillery travel team. Good off-speed pitch, gets a swing and a miss. Caleb is a Virginia commit, the son of Gabe and Carey, and his brother means a lot to him. Brother playing small college baseball. His brother Barrett, he calls him. He's my lighthouse. He's guided me to help me understand what's ahead for me. Knee buckler, breaking ball. That's a great call, and, and I had the, the same thing. My, my older brother was three and a half years older, and everything he learned, he passed down to me and, and really coached me up. It's great to have that older brother that helps you out. Outside corner, a little bit of life. David, is that ease? Bit of a lower arm angle, but watch this late movement, guys. And I, and I don't think hitters see the ball with him. He's got the ball behind him. It's such a short, quick arm action. He's thrown three pitches so far. He's throwing them where he wants. Bonner's like, what was that? Yeah, it, and he might not have thought that that was a strike. He, he, he Greg Maddox him right there. He got a <laughs> lot of late run. I was going to ask you the first out of the inning on the first pitch, first pitch changeup to the first hitter you face. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love it. And, and he, 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 this is reminding me a lot of just, you know, vintage Greg Maddox. You you, you mentioned CC Sabathia. We're, we're, we're mentioning two Hall of Fame pitchers yeah. here. But uh, it's, just a, it's just a similar, that ultra sink, and, and, and you can see him, like, getting down in his legs and throwing changeups first pitch. And, you know, you, you hear stories of Maddox, like, not getting a particular call and he's like I was setting that pitch up for two years you know just the old doctor of course the one pitch that Maddox could throw that so hard to throw is the, is the backdoor fastball I call it glove side run much to some of our young scouts annoyance but you create that glove side run just like that he didn't quite get the corner on that and that's such a unique pitch to be able to command and have at your at your call and Maddox you know won 363 games the big leagues largely because of that pitch yeah. he's trying to be careful with connor griffin the jackson prep star the young man who plays for knights nation who classed up a couple of years ago and swings through a 3-0 change up <laughs> yeah. i'm not hello? sure hello yeah. i'm not sure what that's just on this is a slow heartbeat he's just like oh you know 3-0 i'll just get a little get me over change up he'll swing at this i'm not giving him a fastball and you see how low effort that that delivery is yeah this is this is a the, a doc yeah, he's dicing and slicing and doctoring him up out there love it working quick Calls his changeup replicating the sinker, but seven miles an hour slower when he shared his scouting report. He tries to replicate the exact same motion. Just missed the outside corner. And that was a, a perfect pitch. Uh, definitely off the plate. Didn't get the call this time, but like when you see that kind of pinpoint accuracy framed perfectly. But it's a ball. Griffin, I see you flinching over here, David. Griff, Griffin was not taken off that gear right away. He was like, okay. Connor Griffin out there at first. Glad to be here. When he was a young man, he had an awful go-kart accident. 100 stitches in the facial area as a young man. He's at first now. Samuel Richardson not wasting any time, but that's a changeup for strike one. I'd almost call that, if I wasn't looking at the spin rate, I'd call that a curveball because it's got curveball depth and shape yeah, to it. Yeah, it's, it's dropping off the table. Yeah, but but it's obviously with that kind of 1457 spin, you know, that's obviously a changeup profile. A recent Texas commit, Samuel Richardson, put that on his resume. Lewisburg High School in Mississippi. 
He's Cobb Astros, his travel team, the son of Shannon and Cedric. That one will skip on by and head to the backstop. Levi Clark tried to play that one, come out of the crouch because Griffin was on the move. And, and I mean, Richardson, just a lot of Manny Machado movements. You said he's coached up by Bill Hall. Yeah. Uh, my old teammate, what a, what a, Bill Hall was just great teammate, loved just getting after it on the field. I mean, I got to play with him one year with the Astros, and he could go get them at second. He, he, he was, a, to me, like if you're a defensive, like focus and grinder, uh, that, that tells me the character, and he went and played some D. Woo! Yeah, that's a laser beam. Billy Hall would like this one. It's off the wall on one hop. Richardson hustling on around into second with the double. There's that power. There's that strength. Samuel Richardson. Yeah, and he hit one in the in the in the first his first at bat that almost got out, and he's taking a nice healthy hat, gets the high change up. That's the one thing you don't want to do is get it up, and Richardson makes him pay with a nice laser double over left field. Just a little bit of elevation on that. We had a two run homer. Yeah, he's he's taking some nice hacks. That's a beautiful bat path. Little Manny Machado, Bill Hall, you're doing some good work, my man. <laughs> you're watching. Calls him his, I love that he calls him, he's my baseball uncle, he said. Yeah, dude, he's, a, he's so fun. What a fun guy to be around. He was a brewer for a long time when I announced there. One of my favorite men to announce with his actions. Could yeah, play anywhere on the a, field, Hunter, anywhere. What, did he have 40 or was it 30? He had a huge year with the 30 Brewers. sounds right for sure. 30 a something, lot. 30 plus. A lot. Could this man do that someday? Catcher Kadar on B-Day, the LSU commit and the Home runs challenge champion earlier. He picked up a walk in his first plate appearance. Good breaking ball. Danny, what do you have for us on Samuel? Yeah, well, you guys are gushing on Bill Hall, and that's exactly what Sam did, too. I asked him, have you changed your approach at all in the plate? And he said, yeah, actually, I have earlier this year. Bill gave me a lot of pointers. I dropped my leg kick this month. I had too much head movement, too much hand movement with that leg kick. He took it out, and he said that's made the difference. That's helped with the power, guys. So, Hunter, and, and a great great point, Danny. What do you have to trust to do something like dropping an entire part of your swing? you got to really trust I, yeah, you, and I mean, you can trust Bill Hall. This guy had a long, great big league career, uh, you know. But but at the end of the day, you gotta you you have to be willing to sometimes take a step back to take three steps forward. And you know, I was a tinkerer. Not everyone is. And uh -huh. It helps. Kader on Beatty hits a high fly to right. Michael Molinax puts that one away for the out. There's that smiling Georgia boy. The perfect game, All American Classic. Trying to get you to how we got here. Our Launch Hydrate game summary. Launch Hydrate, win the moment. It's been all about the pitchers early on. There's been fastballs, there's been breaking balls, and the catchers have been there showing beautiful pitches as well. Then a timely hit by Miles Bailey that found the hole. The Florida State commit shot it through the right side. It played at both Madunio and Mullinax. And then a roller to the right side off the bat of Bryce Claibon. Come on down, Brody Johnston, but oh, Sammy. Sammy playing paddle ball with that left field wall. And that's where we stand. A three to two score. And you bet he's enjoying that. As we introduce you to Anson Siebert, the right hander. He's out of Overland Park, Kansas, Blue Valley Southwest High School. Tyler Kincaid, his head coach, the Royals scout team. Siebert committed to go to the University of Tennessee. D, tell us more. Well, the first thing you're going to notice is Anson Siebert's size. He is 6'9", 225. And he what? is every bit of that when you stand next to him. Trust me. Uh, and it's very smooth and easy mechanics. He's obviously been taught very well because a big pitcher like that, you want to keep things simple. We're probably going to see a 95, 96 mile an hour fastball and a, and a little slider that, that he's still kind of developing but it's going to be a good pitch for him in the future. Against the number one player in the nation in P.J. Morlando, the fastball zips right down the middle with some teeth at 96, as you said. Ooh, talk about some teeth. That looked like it came just that, that straight downhill plane from 6'9", little Rob Dibble right there. Ooh, fun comp. That one low and inside. Siebert, by the way, and this is fun because who do amateurs love watching? Maybe sometimes they mimic someone who's like them. He said, I love watching Tyler Glass now because he's the same size as I am. I learn a lot watching Glass now. A little breaking ball, but it missed in. 
I, I love the, he's from Kansas, he's going to Tennessee, and he kind of softly tips his cap like a little, like he's got a cowboy hat out, out, out there or something. Pretty fun to watch the mannerisms. Young Siebert. Beaching. Look at him, look at him. Watch that pitch, watch the, the follow through right here. It's like he's two-stepping or something. He's giving a little do -si do Watch this. <laughs> Slide it, tip the cap. Orlando, as he digs back into the box, loves being a, a protector to Leanna, his younger sister, who's 14. Mom is Christy, dad, Perry. Military for 20 years, as we shared with you, as that breaking ball just missed the outside corner. There's a ton of confidence for this man. He played in the select festival, but it's not the kind of confidence that is off-putting. It's the kind that actually is a magnet that pulls people towards him. And that breaking ball, I'd be confident with that pitch as well. Right down the middle, hammer, right turn back to the dugout. That's strike three. And, yeah, go ahead. Dave. And the, the pitching this game, I, they all know who P.J. Morlando is. And he's being pitched so tough. And these are those are his first two strikeouts of the summer. Yeah. And they've come on just nasty two strike pitches, you know, perfectly executed. And P.J.'s like, hey, I don't want to be number one ranked anymore. I don't want anybody <laughs> to know who I Three, am Three, two curveballs, you know, that, like that's impressive. All right, Levi Clark now. Clark. Deals with 97, right down the gut, 0-1. He struck out back in the second inning, did Clark. Of Stephanie and Matt. He's worked a ton defensively this year. Matter of fact, David, he said, and these are his words, I've grown the most this calendar year behind the plate. Framing used to be a very late framer of pitches. Now I've worked countless hours to train the low ball, work on the low ball, being on time and not missing it. And he's getting a head start then because learning how to be a catcher, I think if you watch how catchers progress to the big leagues, it's such a long learning curve for a cat. Not, not that it isn't the most hardest physical position because it obviously is. You're getting beat up every time. You're having to catch every bullpen. It, it's a thankless job, and it, it, but it's also the hardest position to learn. And that's why you see so many catchers who end up as big league managers because you have to learn so much. Yep, it is. It is a very, there's a lot to learn. And it's very rare to get a good defensive young catcher. Giants have one right now, though. And uh, the Orioles have one right now. And you're watching uh, what Rushman and, and Bailey are doing for their respective franchises. But look at, can you get pants long enough for Seabird? You're going to need some customs. <laughs> Looks like about a 34 waist and about a 40 length. Lively fastball again. So a breaking ball for strike three to get Morlando and just a running 95 in. I am high on what I have seen from this guy. That is a funky plane to try to to try to hit against this and, and, and to get your barrel in a proper position. It's just you don't see the ball coming from 6'9. It's tough to prep for. It, it's it's unique, it's deceptive. Pretty special stuff right here from Anson Siebert. And this has been nice to see because he was the number one ranked pitcher in the class going into the national showcase. I think he'd be one of the first to tell you that he didn't pitch well that day. And he dropped a couple couple slots amongst the pitchers. And he's coming out and he's reasserting himself now with better velocity, better command, and just more body life, it looks like, than what he showed last month here in Chase Field. Noah takes a pitch that's just off the plate. One and one, the count of 4.0 student Noah Franco in the classroom dealing with this presence. How'd you like that 89 mile hour changeup? Huh? I mean, 88.8 .8 right there. It's uh, it's just wild to me what high school pitchers are capable of today. I think when back in when I was in high school, I saw one pitcher that threw 94, and it was a big deal. <laughs> you know, all these kids are are seeing 94 on the regular, 97. A lot of guys touching that so far tonight. One, two, fastball, 96 miles an hour. Sieber just struck out the side. There are a lot of beautiful buildings going up in downtown Phoenix, but there's a brand new skyscraper that just moved here from the Midwest.
Three to two is the score. Now it's time for our Turtle Box game break. Turtle Box, the loudest, truly portable, waterproof, Bluetooth speaker on the market, ready for anything. And I'm going to tell you what, the work we saw with William Schmidt on the mound, it was quite impressive to watch. The right-hander who did some incredible things out there. The spin doctor, they call him, and they call him that for a reason. A couple of big strikeouts. Danny's with him. Danny? Yeah, D, thanks so much. All right, Schmitty. So the guys were gushing about your spin rates. So I wanted to get you on. Can you tell them how you developed that wicked spin? Uh, I think it's just in my genetics. Uh, I got, like, super big hands. Show, show them. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? And, uh, I don't know, long fingers. And basically, I just get it and throw it as hard as I can, and it spins. How much fun is it to show that off on this kind of stage? Because these are your teammates, but also these are these are the guys in your class. Uh, it's really cool. Every time I pitch, people text me like, oh, your spin was even better today than it was last time. And it's tough for hitters to hit like pitches with high spin when they don't know what it's going to do. So it's, it's really fun. Show me your hands one more time. Guys, that's pretty big. Here, look. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Thank you. Thank you. D? Baseball star and a softball star down there, Danny. Well done. And I know Danny with her experience. I love those conversations. Hey, by the way, allow us to introduce you to another talented arm. His name is Tegan. That's the first name. Cunes is the last name. T Money is the nickname. He's from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Kane's National, his team. This is a Tennessee commit. He's dealing with the Las Vegas native Ty Southasim here. And Ty with a line drive base hit to right field. He did this the entire PG National Showcase, and with his performance there, David, he earned his way here. Yeah, he was not on the short list to make the roster before PG National. We've known him forever. He was a festival player, but you never sell Ty short, and we did a little bit, but we made up for that initial error. He's on this team and doing what he does. I mean, that's a beautiful approach, the inside-out little beautiful line drive and he purified that perfect spin and look at that he's got the hips he's got you know it's all in the hips baby get you a knock in his first at bat you know he had a little liner too so two line drives two at bat snuck in a nice beautiful low line drive single that's a nice approach i love that strikes or whatever they're gonna I love that he's some fun yeah well absolutely he always does as we talked about with the brothers at home and how they all push one another t tate and troy dad is tip her mom is Tip, dad is Paul. They're all ball players. He's just a fun, athletic, smiling guy. We loved him at the Select Festival. Getting to know him and his family. Bryce Rayner hits now. Bryce hit a ball hard, but hit it right at a defender back in the second inning. Clavon turned it into a double play on to Pano. So Halpert's Harvard Westlake guy hits again. That's a nasty breaking ball inside corner. Yeah, Kuhn's would probably be a, was probably the runner-up in the uh, the Trackman Award, the Spin Doctor Award. That's his big pitch, the hard spinning curveball, 27 to 2900. Just a little short, shorter Schmidt, but still an outstanding pitch. Son of Melissa and Mike. There are four at home: Lane and Carson, Ileana and Easton, and this man on the mound, T Money, who's got a nice defender behind him making that play. A little. Shovel pass, if you will, by Clavon. Rice Clavon. That was nice, as they say. And I mean, he's just showing off the, the coordination right here, the smoothness, nickname nice. And that play, that's so pretty. You can just tell the movements, the athleticism, elite. And the thing that makes Clavon different than most two sport athletes is, you know, a lot of times we'll say, oh, he missed a lot of time because he had you know, practices, and he had football, and he just doesn't have the time. Clavon plays as much baseball as anybody here. I don't know how he prepares for a season, especially as a quarterback, but he is always playing baseball. Line drive, center field. The big Cardinals fan shoots it into the alley. Hurries on around. The run will score. Look at Ty fly. Wow, and, and this, we're watching a really good game of hardball going on. A little more hitting, go, you know, this season than, than than years past in the PG. But these are just great approaches. Look at him getting his legs, get a pitch that was painted away, shoots it right back up the middle. 
not trying to do too much and getting himself an RBI to tie the ball game. I, I'm loving the offense. I mean, we can highlight the pitchers, see the great pitches, see an Anson Siebert come out and deal. But I'm loving seeing this offense. Slater aid. Slater aid, baby. Slade Caldwell, the Arkansas native. And, you know, he just he, he had a good at bat. He struck out on that nasty curveball. His first at bat hustled the first got on. Look at him hustling again, just causing havoc in this game, making it happen. I'm a fan. Slaterade is up the list as far as I'm concerned, and I've only seen two at bats. I could pretty much guarantee he was going to steal there if they had <laughs> that wild throw. I had the stopwatch out. He's faster he than the going. baseball. Slaterade would run the you know, brick wall is afraid of him. The son of Steve and Terry is Trey Snyder hitting now. As that one is just a little bit low. All right, Snyder on my checklist for BP today is what taking one of the best batting practices. So he's going out there confident, I think, in this game. So what constitutes the a best batting practice for you? What are you looking for when you're scouting? A, a sort of a combination of barrels and then making a swing adjustments. That's not a barrel, but it's going to get uh, get Snyder to first base. Yeah, look at him. The bloop attack is what we call that right there. You know, good hitters get jammed. And you got to, as Lance Berkman told me when I was young, he said, you got to use the whole bat to hit 300 right there. <laughs> That's perfect. He muscled that one out in the right field. Perfect eyes checked up out there on the beautiful turf here at Chase. And so Nicholas Montgomery takes his chance now. Nicholas grounded out back in the third inning, the Cypress, California man. Can play first, can catch. We've seen him at a dozen and a half perfect game events. He just played really well at the 17U World Series for CBA. As that breaking ball misses outside. Yeah, Hunter, my idea of a perfect batting practice is probably a little different than yours. I was you were, just curious. You were telling me before the game your idea of batting practice was to hit it as hard as you can, as far yeah, as I you can. I didn't like my batting practices. I, I had I had some teammates help me because I just I loved hitting homers and, and batting practice. But when I was young, Carlos Lee would challenge me to an opposite field home run derby to try to get me <laughs> locked into a proper swing. And you know, when I went to San Francisco, that all went went to heck because right field was just there was no. It was not fun for a righty to hit a ball in the air to right. Breaking ball and a good one is a strike to Montgomery. But it, it is fun. I, I actually just love watching batting practice. And, yeah, to me, it, like you said, I, I like to see a good approach. Something similar to what we saw from South the scene is, uh, like, low line drives the other way, low line drives and this ball gets away. And then. Yeah, the runner was on the move and come on down as it serves a couple of purposes. Snyder. The second, when that one skipped by, Caldwell scored just a little bit too much for Drew Rogers behind the plate. And the West takes the lead on the old, uh, what Tim Flannery calls the RTI. He says you can't have too many of these runs thrown in. A lot of them happen in these kind of exhibition-y games because pitchers and catchers trying to get on the same page. Three. Framed that one up nicely. That's an electric high spin fastball up there in the zone. Nearly 2,500 at 93, David. And he needed that right there with the defense problems. And he and Rodgers have had a little trouble getting on the same page. There's been some shaking off of pitches. Um, I don't think Rodgers is recognizing Hume's curveball real well. And uh, as you said earlier, these are players that have not pitched. They may know each other as teammates. They played against each other. But I'm pretty sure Rodgers has never caught Cunes before today. Meet Cam Caminetti. He's from Scottsdale, Arizona. And it wasn't too long ago that he opted to class up. He's at Saguaro High School. Should have been a 25. Is crushing all the academics now. He is now in this class, in this draft. This is a gifted two-way player, ranked 15th in the land, an LSU commit. And he deals with a breaking ball over the outside. David, he took a unique route to Caminetti. Instead of playing with his age and travel ball, he played up an 18U team starting his freshman year, the Chi-Town Cream, and played a lot in the Midwest and down in Georgia, and it served him so well. Oh, no doubt about it. And one thing to remember, I swear he's grown two inches since National in the last month. He's listed at 6'205". He has to be 6'4", about 195 now, just from watching him around this week. He just turned 17 years old very recently, so very young for the class. 
which, uh, you know, if you're, if you're uh, you know, going up in a class, you know, you can do it because you're older. You can do it because of talent. And he did it because of talent. And he's now playing really over, like you said, Darren, before. What he's always been is against older players. Caminetti right back to the screen. There, there were thoughts when the rumors came around that he might reclassify, that he may go completely as Bryce Harper did and jump to Scottsdale Community College and play one year and then go into the draft. And he made it clear, I'd like to win a state championship at Suaro High School. I want one more year of high school. The proms, the friends, whatever goes along. I want to be in high school one more year. And basically, Suaro's in his backyard. Breaking ball, that's a tough one to deal with. We'll see Cam pitch later in this game, too, as the closer, because he's a left-handed pitcher that throws 95. Tegan gets right out of that mess. Glad to have you spending time with all of us on Perfect Game TV, where we hope you've downloaded our brand new app. And if you do so, we'll quickly introduce you to a talented left-hander. His name is Mason Brassfield. He is from California, albeit Bakersfield, California, up north of Los Angeles. GBG is his travel team, Garcia Park Baseball Group. Nomar's brother, Michael. And he is a TCU commit, got a chance to to get to know this young man really well this past week. He came on our Sirius XM radio show, a big personality. How about the arm? What does he do? Well, the, arm, the arm's pretty good. He's been up to 94, 95 from the left side. Young man who has always been a two-way player, and we're seeing that more and more, of course. Now they even label players in the draft as TWP, two-way player. Um, but Brassfields, I, I've always thought his future is clearly on the mound, and he's on this roster solely as a pitcher. And, We'll see what he does at this increasingly offensive-oriented game. And he's got a big league head of hair, too. I mean, a real big league head of hair. Those blonde locks flying out from underneath Mason. Natural. When he showers, it falls down to his shoulders. That's how natural it is. And a great personality. He's all business now, though, against one of the best hitters in the country, the tall, slugging Virginian Aiden Harris. And the first pitch of fastball at 92, jumping up and away from Aiden. Harris struck out back in the second. I just got to say, just the talent level and 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 just the how how great of athletes and ball players they are, and what a good game we're watching right here. It's just so fun to watch how good the high school talent is, and to watch them compete and get after it. It's going to be exciting. The future of baseball is bright. These kids are they have some amazing at bats, and just can't wait to hear how their seasons go and and their careers go. It's pretty impressive. One and two, the count. Just got a piece of it, and he fouls it off. I, I think it's been fun. We remind you, Brassfield's a really good student. Four AP classes since his sophomore year, and he's a 4.0 GPA. We had the great opportunity to be in four different homes this year of PG athletes on draft day, and we'll share all that content with you over the next month or so. Breaking ball. Oh, baby, that's a dandy. Where'd that come from, David? That, that's impressive. That's, that's 85 miles an hour. It's a slider that looks like it's going straight down. It's very well disguised with the arm slot. Yeah, that's, that's late a, right there. And, and, and he shook to that pitch. And, and David, you mentioned that these kids have, you know, they've played against each other. And that that's kind of what I was speaking about is like there's approaches. There's game within a game. They're not just out here trying to showcase how hard they can throw it. They're playing some baseball. And this is like big league at bats. Hitters having good good approaches, not just swinging for the fences. Obviously, they're going to hit home runs. They're going to show the power. But it is real high-level baseball. Son of Sandra and Vito is Andre Madunio, a great family, a good young man, and crazy stuff. He threw 97 as a pitcher, ran a 6-4, threw 100 from the outfield, and threw 97 across the infield at PG National. Over the top of that off-speed pitch as he comes up empty. And he's got a knock. Yeah, he had that RBI knock. RBI knock, I believe. Hunter, it was crazy. I mean, it, it, you make up a metric, he chased it, and he blew it off the map. There's that <laughs> hammer again. Oh, baby, downward 
toward that back foot. It just disappears. That's two in a row for strikeouts. I did not see that pitch, PG National, because this is, this is, has to be one of the better breaks. Woo-wee! Your slider, late, deep, located. It's got all, it checks I'm, all the boxes. I'm wondering if he changed the grip or something. It almost looks like a knuckle curve slider, and, and but that is from the outside corner to in off the plate, and it is sharp and crisp. He's got it working today. Fastball over the outside for strike one. Way deep in right field, up high at Chase Field. There are three numbers retired. Our honorary chairman, Luis Gonzalez, number 42 for Jackie Robinson. And then there's number 51 out there in right field. And I can't help as I watch a gifted lefty think of number 51. That's Randy Johnson's number 51. He threw some nasty back foot slides. I'm going to say the big unit would love watching yeah, this man the on the mound. Unit would be happy with this one. Wow. And I mean, I mean, Brassfield right now, I just like imagine a catapult. It's like it feels like he's just like pulling the rock back and then just like slinging it. He rears back, but yeah, Randy Johnson had you know, that sidearm sling in. Tall lefty, angry at you. <laughs> the 0-2. That one skips in there. Alkai Kea is catching behind the plate. The Hawaiian. Was that the changeup? I right think that there, was David? the changeup. He, he spiked the changeup. That's a field pitch. It's tough to want to show him. He's still got the changeup, but that slider, when it's working like that. And he's replicating the release point and the arm slot so well between the fastball and that nasty slider right there. Right over the top of it. One, two, three sliders. All of them with teeth like a piranha. Oh, yeah, you know it, Mason. Oh, and that hair. It's the perfect game, All-American Classic. This is our Diamond Cast Plus stat of the game, Diamond Cast. Get more hits with Diamond Cast Plus. Hunter Pence, 19 Ks, 14 of them swinging. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's been a lot of pitching, but there's been some good at bats too. They've been earning it. We're seeing approaches. We're seeing good, healthy swings. You don't feel like anyone's just taking obnoxious hacks. It's just some nasty pitching and some good baseball all around. To be honest with you, from Iowa, we introduce Joey Oki. Plays for the Iowa Prospects, his travel team. He is an Iowa Hawkeye commit. He said, I made an immediate connection with the coaches in the campus, and I wanted to represent my home state. Well, he represents them, the son of Blaine and Angie, at the perfect game All-American Classic. Number two on the jersey, D, not usually a pitcher's number. How does he represent as a pitcher on that mound? Well, he is actually probably as unknown as any pitcher here, which is ironic given he's from Iowa, the home of perfect game. Um, because he very rarely travels outside of Iowa. I have never seen him pitch. He, he was in his high school playoffs during the PG National. Of course, Iowa still plays during the summer. And he's very loyal to his high school, very loyal to, you know, the people in Iowa. And, and he just hasn't got out much. But back in Iowa, he's been up to 96. And he's a strike thrower. He deals with Braylon Payne, a very talented athlete from Houston, Texas. Missouri City, to be specific, is a Houston commit. As he rolls that one out towards short, a couple of steps to his left, up with it and on across is the New Yorker Owen Pano. But Payne right away, he's, he's done some special things. Braylon plays for Texas 12, his travel team, the son of Jerry and Maurice. We'll introduce him more in just a bit. Darren, I have to say, Joey Oki is a fun name to say. Joey Oki. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if your name's Joey Oki, good things are coming your way. Yeah, but shouldn't you be going to, like, University of Oklahoma or Oklahoma State or something? I mean, he's Iowa, baby. Joey, oh, you know, the Oki going to the Oki, <laughs> yeah. Oklahoma. Charlie Bates is from Palo Alto, California. This is an excellent student. He is a Stanford commit. And this is a talented athlete going to play for Coach Esker. He's dealing with Oki on the mound. Danny, tell us a little bit more about Joey. Yeah, well, I love what you guys are talking about because the nicknames are Jokey and Oak. So that's what I got for you, Hunter. I do know that for a fact. I want to tell you a little bit about his sinker. He learned that three weeks ago. His pitching coach, Dan Jennings, showed him the grip. 
And so hopefully we'll, I don't know if we've seen that here yet, I apologize. But the other thing too is you see the height. He said he grew five to six inches when he was 14 and that's when he saw the velo jump deep. Good stuff, good slider over the inside corner. There you go, Dave, another growth spurt. Another growth spurt that you need to be monitoring. Yeah, I was, I was expressing more shock at that 84 slider with 2,800 plus spin rate. Yeah, perfectly painted as well. The east to west attack, kind of the three quarter arm sling, uh, three quarter arm slot kind of coming from the side and really just like looks like he's throwing bowling balls up there it's a heavy sinker you can feel that power behind it my man charlie says you're not done with me yet though i'll hang with that spin this is a a six ap class passer already he is a 4.4 gpa he used to go watch the fireworks at stanford they'd have one firework game a year that was his favorite team not a big league team his favorite team and now he's going to go there as he goes down on strikes well, the Palo, Palo Alto High School campus is literally across the street, El Camino Real, from Stanford. He could walk from a class right over to Stanford Stadium with Sunken Dime in five minutes. So, but hey, Joey Oki showing with yeah. the fastball location. He's thrown every pitch the just about where he wanted. Yes, he's thrown <laughs> every pitch just about exactly where he's wanted it so far. Connor Griffin grew up a big Braves fan. Love watching Ronald Acuna play as he takes that tight breaking ball at 2,700 spin. The son of Kevin and Kim looking at that on the mound. Connor has a unique maturity to him, doesn't he, David? Oh, yeah. He, he's a very calm, calm and collected. You need, never see him too high, too low. You know, he's seen a lot of things in his young life, and he's going to see a lot more, but he's going to approach them all very calmly. Dad's an elite college softball coach. He is a great basketball player, by the way. He won a state title this year, and he was a key member of the basketball team in winning that title. I bet you his dunk reel is pretty impressive, too. He can dunk. Oh, he can <laughs> oh, dunk. Oh, dang. He's got quite a disciplined approach, too. It's, uh, it's calculated, just a beautiful swing. It's a simple, short, two. Uh, man, just like you feel like it's a it's a big league at bat he's already given you, and this is a nasty okie dokie here. Out toward third, tried to play it on a backhand. Not an easy play to make out there. Brody Johnston has it slip on by. Connor, big aggressive turn, round second. Yeah, and he hit this ball hard, and he might not. It might be an error, but that's like that's what you want is a, an opportunity, put a good swing, and that. This is a super tough at bat on a right-handed hitter, that sinker slider combo, and just a tough little short hop on it. Yeah, that's that play with the third baseman. If he isn't coming in on the first first step, and Johnson is a shortstop, he probably hasn't played a lot of third base and doesn't have that instinctive come to the ball. Yeah. There's so much top spin on that that you have almost no chance to, to get it on in between hops. Samuel Richardson gets the call again. He doubled off the wall back in the fourth inning. Slider tried to wrap around the inside corner, didn't do so. 1 0 the count. Well, Hunter, you mentioned earlier in the game about how hard these players are running and how hard they're running the bases off. Griffin was did rounded second by 20 feet on that. Yep. If, if yep. the left fielder had bobbled that in the least, he was going to third yep. base. They, they're gaming out here, they're getting after it, they're hustling. And uh, it's great to see that from, you know, a lot of these kids are so good in their high schools. and. You know, when you're that good, you get a lot of treatment. And to see them out here hustling, grinding, respecting the game, it's it's awesome. It's a, it, it is a breath of fresh air. Richardson has played third base his entire life, so he says, I have my sights set on two guys that I've loved watching. One, Manny Machado, and the other, Nolan Arenado. I check out their videos, I watch their clips. I've learned a ton from both in playing that position. Swings through that one there. I mean, it is an identical Manny Machado. The it's it's wild how how much he has it down his setup. You can see the bat on the shoulder, the breath. Uh, he's he's done his homework. Look at that. It's the same wiggle. Little roller gets over the pitcher's mound, charging. A little off balance throw, but it's turned into an out by Brendan Lawson, the talented Canadian. Middle infielder making the play. The PG All-American Classic having a blast in Phoenix. Here's today's launch home run of the game. Launch hydrate, win the moment. How about a guy with 
412 in his career, Alfonso Soriano. So many great major leaguers here to pass along wisdom. Soriano, a speed and power guy and dynamic. He wasn't afraid to get in there. And Ryan Klesko, they loved him. They won it all in 1995 in Hot Atlanta. He had nearly 300 home runs as well. Wow. Great to see it. Great to see it. Launching some homers. Still got it, huh? Ah. The high finish way <laughs> back. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was fun to see those guys get out there. And boy, Ryan Klesko's got such a, a passionate love for the amateur game. It's been fun to see that part of his life. This man's from Elmhurst, Illinois. Meet Ryan Sloan. He is at York Community High School. He is a Wake Forest commit. Hunter and I have had some great conversations with all the leaders and the athletes at Wake Forest. He'll get in there and learn a lot more about pitching. This right-hander from Illinois goes to work, Hunter. It's a good place for him to go to Wake. Yeah, they got, the, uh, what is it, the, the, the pitching clinic or the pitching uh, school? I call it the pitch factory. The I may be off factory, as well. Yeah, but everyone on Wake Forest last year was, uh, you're going to get a lot better. And, uh, yeah, if, you're, if, you, if you love the art of pitching, Wake Forest is the school for you. They had a great year. They were number one pretty much uh, about 50% of the year. But the Wake Forest pitching lab, so get to the lab. And these kids are coming out really doing some nasty stuff. Brody Johnston now for the second time. Johnston reached on a walk and scored on Miles Bailey's single that moved him around, but Bryce Clavon's ground out scored him to the right side. So Brody with another chance. The Vanderbilt commit. D, what can you tell us about Ryan Sloan? Well, you could see by his ranking, 53, um, that he was not he was one of the last pitchers pitched for this to to pitch in this game. But there may not have been a better pitcher since the PG National Showcase in Sloan. He's gone out at a number of events, PG and uh, other events, and just dominated. Been up to 96, and we saw the slider there for strike two and strike three. He's just been dominant over the last five weeks or so since the National. And that's kind of what I'm expecting to see right here, what we saw in that first at bat. Conrad Quezon now gets his call. He struck out looking back in the third inning. David and Amanda, the parents of this man on the mound, as that is the kind of check swing that he's getting near strikes just about every single time. Sloan loves that arm side run on his fastball, calls it a heartbreaking slider and a downward moving change. Those are his words when he described who he is as a pitcher. A heartbreaking slider. Heartbreaking slider. I love that. I'm gonna I'm gonna rear back, I'm gonna spin this, and I'm gonna break your heart, baby. zip on the fastball that was a, a 95 that had a second gear yeah he's got some he's got the uh, quite a body frame as well David you can see some projectability he hasn't missed leg day <laughs> he's got some tree trunks is that heart breaking slider by the way the heart breaking slider you got you know I was a Jake PV said one time I rear back write your name on it and try to throw it through your soul <laughs> <laughs> there it is again Hey, broke his heart, that's for sure. Kason goes down on strikes. <laughs> Pretty laid back in breaking hearts. Yeah, just like, I'm here to break your heart, and that's what it does. Now you see me, now you don't. What did you expect? One thing that's been very impressive about these pitchers is they're throwing their breaking balls for and their change-ups for strikes. And the hitters have to be realizing, if you don't get to someone early in the count with a fastball just like that, you may not have a chance after that because these guys have too good of a command of their second and third pitches to work the count and have it be in your favor. Number one player in Canada is Brendan Lawson. Here he is now. We get a chance to watch him hit. Tara and Trevor, his parents. He's a Florida commit. Top 50 player as far as the rankings go and plays for the Ontario Blue Jays as he fouls that one off. And he is very, very proud to represent his home country at this game. Yeah, and he's got a very mature approach to the play. You watch him take BP, and he's just filling up the left center field gap. Yeah, he can turn on it. I saw him hit a ball straight into the pool, but most of his swings are very inside, up the middle type approach. Very mature for a 17-year-old. How about that? An entire country smiling as that one's rocketed into center field. A base hit for the man who also plays basketball and skates and plays some excellent hockey. 
Yeah, just an athlete. You you said it right there, David. We call that fighting the good fight, that inside-out approach. You know, you pull the ball on accident, but you can just see him with a beautiful bat path right here, getting down and taking, getting inside that pitch. There's a lot of hits with that approach. What they say, Canadians are low ball hitters, right? Because they all played hockey. <laughs> Cade Brown gets the call. The son of Chan, the legendary coach at Parkview High School. The mom, Tennille, the Georgia commit. We'll talk more about Cade. We'll also talk for a long time about the outing. Rolled out there by Ryan Sloan. Hello, doctor. Perfect game, All-American Classic. And last year, we were fortunate enough to be guided by Mark Rita, the legendary producer for so many years for the Diamondbacks. He produced the Classic. He produced all of the select festivals last year. We learned from him. This past year, Mark lost his life. And for so many years, post-producing, he was an instructor at the Cronkite School here in town at Arizona State University. One of his greatest legacies, aside from his family and those that he leaves behind, are those students that are now in our industry and making our industry better. Reeds, I love you, man. Great producer when I called games for the Diamondbacks, and you left us way too soon. He always had energy. He always had a smile, and he stayed in our ear all time last year, letting us laugh. everybody out which has kind of been a theme of this game so far and we introduce a new PG All-American that he deals with from Carlsbad California Jack Haferkamp a UC Santa Barbara commit plays for Canes West his travel team this is one of those projectable guys David who has kind of jumped onto the main stage quietly jumped onto the main stage but now here he is yeah I'm a big Haferkamp fan I mean we're talking about a 6'4 195 athlete who may still have some growth in him but he's a 629 runner in the 60. He's got you know excellent bat speed. Um, and you can project so, so big on that body and physical talents that he already has. Spent several years with his family, and he knows how fortunate he was to do it. As the one one is swung right through, being able to travel to every ballpark and go to a game in the major leagues. But then his family, led by parents Steve and Diana, authored a book, a really well-selling book, Let's Hit Them All about traveling as a family together and taking in baseball games together and the lessons they learned and sticking together. So he's a talented player, but he's also an author. Yes, and I have that book in uh, in my suitcase right now. I'm going to take it out and read it on the plane back because I talked to the Hayford Camp family two days ago, and they had books with them. So authors, but also salesmen. And having to deal with that pitch there, had a little bit of run, Hunter, that tied him up. Again, everything seems to have a purpose with this left hand. Oh, T. Breezy, and I, he didn't get the call. He might have had the, the strike out the pitch before, and right there goes right at him, and you can feel, you know, I can see why you like him. You can see in his face the competitiveness, the, the focus, the intensity. T. Breezy's coming with it. And we saw the fastballs low and away, and, of course, two-strike fastball. He brought it up and in, and I can guarantee you he did that with intent. Jaden Alkai Kea from Kapalai in Hawaii. As the breaking ball misses low. Resume's a fun one. He's a Vanderbilt commit. This is an explosive power bat. And a young man who plays for USA Prime National who was a Little League World Series champion representing Hawaii back in 2018. He drives that one foul down the right field line. And just to add to the, to the lore of winning a Little League World Series from an island state, he was not the catcher, but the pitcher, folks, in the semifinal game, and he struck out 15. Wow. You love to follow up in the Little League World Series. I'm going to be heading to Williamsport in about five days. Uh, it's exciting to, to see how they grow up and to still see him playing ball. What a story. You never forget it. No, and there, there are some memories there that you, you absolutely cannot replace. Do you remember anything about Little League? 
I mean, I, don't, I was not in the Little League. I, I was playing, like, the select ball or whatever, so I didn't play on the teams in my local area. But, I, you know, you just see, like, the Bellingers and the Frasers and the kids who, like, were in it and did really well and then make it to the big leagues. And it, that, that legacy lives with you forever. We're You know, depending on how far he goes, Akai Kea, uh, we'll rewatch that strikeout performance. There's no doubt about it. It's a power bat. It's, it's a thunderous bat. For the Hawaiian, he goes down with a fastball again, set up perfectly well at 92, right by him. And these are different strikeouts than we saw before. We saw Sloan and Brassfield just dealing with the sliders and stuff. Both these first two strikeouts are on fastballs. And yeah. they're not, and they're 91, 92 mile an hour fastballs. And it just looks like he creates a, 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 a rising fastball. You know, he's kind of smaller, and it, it's that like that little extra tick where it's the ball is not where it appears to be. Reminds me a lot of Ted Lilly, you know. Okay. Ted Great Lilly, Ted, Ted Lilly was 90, 91, 90, could touch ninety two, but like he could get the fastball by me, and it just they, he worked that top of the zone so well. He could hit every corner of the of the strike zone with every pitch, and for me, I always just had a tough time with Ted Lilly and this guy Taylon Bell, T Breezy. Hey, I could see a lot of that in him. Miles Davis gets his first at bat, the son of Jennifer Wilson. He idolizes his mom, who's been so much to him as that one sails to the backstop. The older brother is Skyler. And when you ask him, who do you like to watch, he makes it clear, this Iowa commit, Mookie Betts. He said his swing and mine have a lot of similarities, but more than anything, I love his energy. I hope I have that much energy as the breaking ball. He comes up empty. But David, he's a first-team All-State player. He's an All-Metro basketball player as well. I first saw Miles when he was 14. I said, I right away, I, I said, this kid's going to hit, and I follow him closer than I have more most of the people in this class, and that's what he's he's always done is he's always hit. Oh, a pretty good pitch. Ooh, that was nearly the side. <laughs> that was nearly that, the side. Was that low? Where, 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 where was this, David? Maybe I missed it. Ooh, that was middle, middle. <laughs> it happens. Good pitch. Fallon Bell. Four, four shake-offs, five. Five shake-offs. Okay. Uh, okay. How many pitches does he have? On to two. It's lifted to the right side. Whatever it was he called for worked very well. Noah Franco, who had shifted it over to that side of the stadium. David Ronsley previewed. You're going to see a unique pitcher from Florida. Oh, David, you were right, Mr. Bell. Wow. Perfect game, All-American Classic, Dick Sporting Goods, player of the game. Every season starts at Dick Sporting Goods. There are a couple of pitchers that hammered the side. Anson Seifer did it, and then Mason Brassfield did it. Our Dick Sporting Goods pitchers and players of the game. Both of them striking out the side. And both very impressive. They were not fluke strikeouts. Siebert, you know, had the stuff we've always seen. He left them for the national. And Brassfield coming out of almost nowhere with that power slider. New slider, that thing was, uh, he had a, he had, it was working. And, and, and honestly, in Arizona, a lot of times, it's tough to get the breaking balls going. Ethan Scheffelbein is committed to go to UCLA for Coach John Savage. He's at Corona High School for head coach Andy Wise. USA Prime, his travel team, the son of Jason and Michelle, this left-hander. Some of the, the numbers in minimal PG works. A really good student, a 4.1 GPA, and he's got some, some new names he's going to deal with getting ready in the on-deck circle as well. You'll meet Noah Sheffield, who... When Noah Sheffield hits, the legendary father Gary is here. Noah, tell me folks at home and Hunter Pence if you see any similarities in the approach. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But David, tell us a little bit before that matchup about this left-hander. Well, Shufflebine's the guy after National, Darren. You and I talked about checking all the boxes. Left-hander, throws a lot of strikes, true three-pitch guy. Works it up to 94, maybe 11.95 today with the adrenaline running, but a, a very polished, prototypical Southern California pitcher who has the pitches, has an idea how to use them. It's a battle of the chefs, the iron chefs, Sheffield versus Sheffield Bind. <laughs> Can't script that any better. Noah lives in Tampa, Florida with mom and dad, Gary Sheffield, of course, and his mom, the rock of the family, DeLeon Sheffield. 
We know his brother Christian oh so very well. He's a super perfect game prospect. His older brother Jaden plays at Georgetown. Good fastball, Hunter. What do you got on that bat waggle? I mean, it's <laughs> classic. It's so crazy to see his son doing the same thing. Can't teach it, or can you? The interesting thing is older brother Jaden, who Darren mentioned, didn't have that in his swing. Interest that is so interesting. I wonder if he just watched his dad and like how do you pick that up? Woo! That is unleashing. And his dad took some big hacks too. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Wow. Does he have quick hands, David? Not as quick as his dad's. <laughs> oh. Not yet. I think they're pretty quick. But it's about fine tuning the quick hands into a nice approach. Gary had quite an approach. It's a high pop up into shallow right field. Jack Haferkamp is out there. Let's listen in to our New Balance sounds from the dugout. New Balance Baseball, proud partner of the Dick's Sporting Goods Perfect Game All-American Classic. Those sounds come from Danny. Guys, hi. I will, well, first of all, I was going to tell you about Noah's bat wag. He told both me yesterday that he got it from his dad. He actually tried it as a joke at a showcase, and he was like, actually, I really like this. And so he decided to keep it in his game. And, and I thought that was pretty cool. Dad said, listen, if you're going to do it, then you better do it. But then Cade came up to me and said, I want to show you something. <laughs> so uh, what would you like to show me now that we're here on television? So uh, this is uh, my pink stuffed llama queso. Uh, no, it's queso. So it's been in my bag for a couple years now. And uh, oh, oh, what a play. Darren, oh, take it. Queso. Incredible play made out there by Ty Southasine. It was a beautiful, hard hit ground ball. It was an opportunity to see Caden Lopez hit for the very first time. Guys, here's the play. Oh Hunter. my God, like to turn and make this an out? Southasine is making a case. He can't even believe it. Are you kidding me? Oh, he got him. Back to Danny. Danny, we need to hear about what we got, what yeah. Cade's got. Yeah, well, first of all, what did you think about that play? Oh, my oh my goodness. That, that, that's one of the craziest plays I've ever seen. Ty, I mean, but it's no it's no surprise for Ty. I mean, he's, he's always doing anything, like stuff like that. But uh, Finish about your llama? So this is Queso. He's been in my bag for three years now, and uh, he's my little good luck charm. So ever since he's been in my bag, I've always hit good or done good done well and then like a couple times he's gotten out of my bag on accident and I've done bad it looks a little dirty can you tell us about that yeah so I mean it's been in my bag with all my catching gear and everything for like the last three years and I mean he doesn't take baths you know so do you um sometimes <laughs> I'm gonna leave you guys with that queso Cade and uh he's a catcher bats. you know he's a catcher I respect it He's a catcher, that's a pitcher. Incredible job on the mound by Ethan Scheffel by now. He had an amazing play behind him, no doubt about it. Oh, Ty South has seen, are you kidding me? The Perfect Game All-American Classic from Chase Field here on Perfect Game TV. This is a pitcher we've been tracking for quite some time, and deservedly so. He's a Jay Johnson LSU commit, which means he doesn't have to go far from home, you see. Landon Victorian is from Lake Charles, Louisiana. He's at Barb High School. His high school coach, Glenn Caccini, who has coached the US 18U national team. So this is a man who's really touched amateur baseball and Landon Victorian, it's fun to see him work. He has been ranked near that top spot for a long, long time as a pitcher. Paul is his dad, Kayla is his mom, and a chance to play as a PT All-American. He has been waiting for a long, long time. And Who's his favorite player as he gets things set with Drew Rogers? Hunter, it's not a pitcher. It's Jazz Chisholm. He said he plays the game with energy. His fun is infectious for me, reminds me to have fun. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. Jazz Chisholm's got a lot of color, a lot of personality, a smooth swing. What has he got? The Euro step when he hits the homer. <laughs> gotta have some, you gotta have some, you know, some sizzle. This man has sizzle. He is from Texas. He's an LSU commit as well. A couple of LSU commits dueling here. David Hogg, the second. 
the number two ranked player in Texas. Both of them select festival alumni. East Cobb Astros, his travel team. Son of Joe and David. All gets a high fly ball center field. Michael Mullinax eases in front. Michael makes the play for the out. Hogg is the first out of the inning. David, tell us a little bit more about Landon. Well, Landon's been one of the most successful high school pitchers um, in the spring and the summer circuit for years. Pitches for Barb High School, which is always a top 10 uh, team and was their best pitcher as a sophomore, which at that school is virtually unheard of. And very polished, not the hardest thrower here. I was going to think about him when I instead of went with Talon Bell as my my softer quotes, softer thrower here, but a guy who has all the pitches. Um, but he's still very projectable. You know, it's a long, lean body. You can see him throwing harder. I'm not sure he really needs to actually. Daniel Arambula gets the call from Yucaipa, California. Ralph Gajeda. Kaipa High School legendary coach. So is his travel coach, John Pano, at CBA. And this is his first at bat. I love when we get to introduce athletes later in the game. And by the way, Daniel is the third. His dad is the second or junior. Daniel Arambula, the third, if you're going to be specific. Got that soft grip. You can see him holding the bat loose. Love to see that. Landon with a nice little breaking ball. David, tell us why Daniel is here. Daniel's a hitter. That plain, plain and simple. He has always hit, always hit at a high level in that highly competitive Southern California environment. Plays for USA Baseball and hits. I actually asked a few of the scouts, our scouts here, what about him as a catcher? Because he has big, big calves and a strong lower half and such. And it made me think of Nolan Arenado, who, who everybody wanted to ca catch it as well at this same age. Always not going to be fast enough to play on the left side of the infield. And I can see some Arenado in, in Ambula, just in the in the physique and the general tool set. I can said, see that. It said hard and foul. David wants him back behind the plate, grinding. Hey, by the way, we talked about him being the third. One of the reasons he passed it long, it was five years ago, and his grandfather, Danny, of course, his namesake, loved to watch him play baseball, never afraid to, to get to the ballpark and see his grandson play, waiting for a transplant. He lost his life five years ago. He said, he's the dude that I lace him up for, the guy that I try to inspire and try to honor him. I, hey, listen, I'm sure Grandfather Danny would be pretty darn thrilled that you're a PG All-American. Yeah, just an absolute nasty pitch right there. And you can see Landon Victorian just feels like he's in complete control, calm, having fun out there, smooth. And it's coming off his hand. You say soft throwing. He's touching 94, 93. That's yeah, still coming that's in hot. Why, that's, a, that's the quotation the marks on, on, on high soft school. throwing. Coming into his senior year, not even. Texas commit Theo Gillen. Top 10 shortstop in the country. David, we saw him at a couple of perfect game select festivals. The son of Libby and Sam. He has this unique family vacation where they would go up to the Cape Cod every summer and just escape and get away but he would go to Cape Cod League baseball games all the time as a very young man. Heck, you never know if he doesn't sign a pro contract, he may play there someday, but this Texan went to Cape Cod League games every summer and fell in love with baseball. And it's great seeing Theo here. There's probably been no player in this class or in this game that has battled injuries as much as he's he has over the last couple years. Lost basically the entire 2022 season. I remember you telling me that at National. You yeah. were thrilled just to see him at National. Yeah, too. and to see him come back and, and resume that talent level. I think he missed a, essentially about a year and a half. I, I can't even recall the injuries uh, specifically. But uh, to see him come back to show the tools that he's shown before. He's gotten bigger now, 6'3", 195, but still has that sweet left-handed swing. You know, lefty from Texas, wearing number nine, kind of a similar frame. Reminds me a lot of one of my good teammates, old Brandon Belt right here. Not maybe the same swing, but the stance is pretty similar. Good call, Hunter. As that one is high, and Theo earns himself a walk. Theo is similar to Brandon. Good eye. Doesn't, doesn't swing at any balls. 
Love that. You may be surprised at this age, Brandon Belt was a primary pitcher. I know, yeah. yeah. He says that he used to always beat Kershaw. He was like, I was out of pitcher than Kershaw. <laughs> yep, they, they would have been the same. No, he he, he went to uh, University of Texas as a, as a pitcher for his first year, yep. then, then went to junior college. and That's Belt's claim and, to and, fame. And basically changed to a to a hitter. Another chance to watch Cam Caminetti hit. As I said, we will see him pitch at the end of this game. The gifted two-way player, the left-hander. Charlie Reeder is the head coach of the Shytown Cream, his travel team. Dom and Tracy are his parents. Looks like he has one of those counterbalance bats, too, with the larger knob below the hands. Secondary has him way out front. I don't know how many of them are using it in the games, those counterbalance bats, but around the batting cage, that's all they've been using all week. Virtually every player has that kind of knob counterbalance, you call it, uh, in batting practice. I haven't noticed in the games whether they, they carry it over there, but Caminetti obviously does. What's the benefit, Hunter? Well, it's all feel. You know, there's axe handles. I've seen a couple of the axe knobs. But what one thing you mentioned when you mentioned balance is like, thing you see from Cam Camine is when he's taking his swing, even when he's missing, he's balanced. He's not falling over. That's a professional at bat right there, staying balanced, grinding. And also, can we get a shot of this belt that he's wearing? It's like a shiny gold belt. Look at that take, how soft and quiet. This is this is a healthy, this is a good approach. Look at this bad boy. Oh, there's a belt what upgrade. What the heck is that? Wow. That is nice. Like Michael Jackson would wear something like that. That on, is a on belt stage. upgrade. You, can, you better moonwalk out of the batter's box, baby. Well, he hopes to moonwalk to, to second, maybe, with a <laughs> double. Let's see. 2-2 two, two fights look, it look, off. Look at that foul ball just The thing Pence balanced. notices, by the way. Your eyes, man. You've got hey, laser eyes. I, I'm impressed. I mean, I... We, I watch a lot of baseball. I'm, there's a lot of little things you're looking at, but you just notice. You got to notice the, it's play, the ball players the, thing. The, I think it's sizzle. great. You know, it, it's just it's the game, and, and I'm always studying it. Aaron, Aaron the game. Beattie's going to trade his home run derby belt for that <laughs> I, one. I know that one is just as good. Two two to Cam over the top of that change of pace. He goes down. There is no moonwalk, but there's a very bright future for Cam and for Landon. Coach Caccini, pretty good, huh? So much good going on in this game. Our Rawlings defensive play of the game ties south the scene. Vegas, baby. Oh, David, he had to fight his way to get here, and that's why. Yes, and also great play by the first baseman. I believe that's a Kai of Key. He had first base with the pick, which is a great play by south the scene. Hitter couldn't believe it. You're right. It was Al Kai Kia that made that play, and you're exactly on. Look at Ralphie Velasquez is in the dugout in the black PG jersey. Velasquez, the first-round pick of the Guardians. He's wearing his hat. The perfect game All-American. Good to have Ralphie here. We debuted the documentary about his draft day last night. Find it soon on Perfect Game TV. But that's enough of that because i got to be honest. This may be, David, the man I'm most excited, no matter how it goes, to see pitch. Trey Gregory Alford has just risen so far, so fast. He's from Colorado. He's a Virginia commit. This is 6'5", 235 of explosion. Just explosion. He was the last pitcher added to the National Showcase. We found about uh, out about him, I hate to admit, on Twitter and followed up with some phone calls, said, well, if you can get to Phoenix, we'll give you an inning. We gave him a top of the 11th inning. He came out and threw 97 with a hellacious 85 mile an hour downer curveball. And it was it was the most shocking thing I think we saw the entire national show. I was able on the record to tell him he was a PG All-American. One of the great moments for me selfishly this summer. And Danny has a little bit more on the man out of Colorado Springs. Danny? Yeah, you guys see the number 73, which is a little strange, unique for him, right? He said his grandpa wore it when he played for the Steelers from 1962 to 1963. His grandpa, who was an All-American at Kent State, Darren. Yeah, that's great. What a great family. His joy and passion for making this game and having the good lucky fortune of telling him that he was an All-American begged for the opportunity. And another fun one. This is Akil Namala. Namala, a rising quickly player, his brother Arjun, 
the first round pick of the Toronto Blue Jays and a PG All-American a year ago. Where are they similar? Where are they different, David? Well, they're not really that similar at all except for the power. Akil Namala has some of the best power uh, in this class, raw power. We've seen it the last three days. Um, so that's a definite one. Physically, completely different. Akil, 6'3", 195 pounds, already outweighs his brother by tw probably 25 pounds. Another area of similarity, Akil Namal, the youngest player in this perfect game All-American Classic, has not turned 17 yet. Everything with some heat, 95, 96. This one away, Namala goes down on strikes one more time. Heavy, 96. Yeah, and it's just uh, 6'5", 235, Bulldog, and he's working quick, and he's coming at you. And Namala goes down quick, one, two, three. This is like the late inning version of Lazaro Calera that we saw pitching for the East team in the second inning. Big, strong kid who throws 95, 96 without a whole lot of effort. But but look at how short his arm action is. He doesn't really reach back. It's like coming from right behind the ear. It's, it's a short arm, even though he's big and tall. Uh, w w just watch the release point, and the hand is moving so fast. Whoop. And his foe is Dalton Wentz, dealing with all of what Hunter's talking about from Madison Heights, Virginia. We see him for the first time. Dirtbags National, his travel team. He is a South Carolina commit, son of Shannon and Len Wentz. Dalton Wentz hitting now. And he got a healthy cut on that one. He got his pitch he wanted and just missed it. You could tell he was on that one. Yeah, and that was 92. I think that might have been a cutter or something, maybe. It certainly wasn't a changeup. Yeah. So it was something different, 1,800 spin rate. Maybe it was a changeup, and he just threw it, caught it a little too hard. But that was not. Uh, that was a good foul ball. That went heavy away. Look at the lower spin rate, just that sinker kind of dive. But again, it's 95, a ton of arm side run. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was a changeup that he overthrew. He hasn't quite got the feel, and then comes back with the heater and just blows it by him. Seven pitches, two strikeouts. Quick work. And we haven't seen the breaking ball yet. Just pretty much, except for that one in-between pitch, all heavy, heavy 95-96s. <laughs> that one sails to the backstop. We'll forget about that. <laughs> Another chance, Miles Bailey. This is the fun thing about having an all-star game. You can juggle batting order if you want to see someone or reward someone with another chance to hit. Here is Miles Bailey. He singled in a pair of runs back in the third inning if you were hanging out with us. He's had a really good night overall. Yeah, he had, he had the, was it the two RBI knock? Yep. Kind of the big body, the Ryan Howard, but good approach. Got a lot of coordination for that big body. Look at that take. And I was doing some research on him, and I looked up to the, I was thinking, he has to play football. You know, every bit of 6'4", 240, and he's lifted weights to get there. No record of his playing football whatsoever. He drives that one towards center field, but on the nose to the center fielder. Squaring that one up and making the play out there is Slaterade, Slade Caldwell out of Arkansas. Oh, Mr. Gregory Alford, what a pleasure. Twenty twenty three Perfect Game All American Classic is brought to you by Leaf. Welcome you back to the final full frame. We'll see how it rolls into the ninth inning. We go meet Dino, Jake Yeager. Dino, his nickname. He's from Odenton, Maryland. Archbishop Spalding, his school. Mid Atlantic Red Sox for this young man who is a Maryland commit. Certainly, have Hunter and I enjoyed what has gone on the last few years in Maryland. He's a son of Matt and Penny. This is a wonderful opportunity to pitch so late in this game. Meet Jake Yeager. And Jaeger has that profile body, 6'4", 195 pounds. Fast, fast arm has been up to 95, as pretty much all, all these guys have been at one point. And we'll see if he's throwing the, the strikes that we've seen so many of the last few innings from our young pitchers. Is Braylon Payne, Jerry and Maurice, his parents. He's the only child. There's just the three of them at home. Now, do these, do these kids get to pick their intros? Because... 
they're coming out to some good songs. I think so, day. yes. We had some Green Day, some Mystical. Payne hits that one high to the left side, drifting in, putting that one away out there. Mr. Namala to make the play here in the ninth inning. Akil Namala is the third baseman. Yes, and to answer your question, Hunter, they definitely are asked for their their. That's their song. awesome. We heard That's that awesome. in, in, in in the in the uh, home run derbies. You know when they get to take get up there more. That they played the song their entire at bat, the full song. All right. So, Charlie again. Charlie Bates, Stanford commit. All right, here's another here's another take here for I'll let you hit up on Charlie Bates, but Jaeger has a little bit of Roy Oswald in him. He just really gets down in his legs before he lets it rip. What do you got on that, Darren David? I'll let the scout go. <laughs> you probably you probably helped sign Roy Oswald. I did. I drafted Look Roy Oswald. <laughs> Look at where he's throwing from. He's getting down in his legs and like Roy Oswald would squat so low he would throw it from like a foot above the ground by yeah. the time he released it. Yeah, the, the difference being when we drafted Roy Oswald, I believe in 1997, when I was with the Astros, he was 5'10", 150 pounds. And sent him back to, to junior college in Mississippi, and he grew 25 pounds and was throwing 95 by the time his next spring what, season. What and we had him under control. What, what is the story? The story was that he was like working on his car, and you, hear, you see him kind of really get down in his legs, and he, he releases that ball pretty low. But Roy Oswald was like working on his car, and like he was doing like the shock thing or whatever. It shocked his arm, and all of a sudden he started throwing 97 or something like that. It's like <laughs> I'm it's selling. like a little big league or something. I'm story. selling on that one. I think he said. <laughs> <laughs> David, <laughs> three two. Only facts. Charlie swings right through that one. A little bit of jump. It doesn't necessarily reflect in the high spin rate, but look at this extra gear at home plate. And I think that's what they're talking about. Hunter's talking about with the angle he's coming. He's a tall kid, but he's not like Anson Siebert working down. Yeah. Him. That stride from out. Down to up, the, it's the rise. The, the, the hips sink down, and that's a big thing in the analytical world yeah, now is, is the plane, the different yeah. kind of plane you can get. It, 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 it doesn't rise, apparently, physically, but it really seems like it does. It doesn't sink. Yeah, it planes out. <laughs> It carries. It's carry in the zone, I believe, is the carry. proper scouting phrase. That's the scouting phrase? Yes. Getting good carry on your pitches. Carry through the zone. Connor hits that one hard to the left side, but Akil Namala fires on across. Connor Griffin is erased. Shoots it on over to Cade Brown. Mr. Namala, fine play. Please spend time with us next week because we are going to have a blast with the finest 13 new players in the land. 11 o'clock Eastern and with your coffee out west, 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the 13 New Select Festival. Watch it all on Perfect Game TV from on campus at the University of Tennessee. I'll be able and be lucky enough to be on the call with Danny Wexelman down in the dugout. Jeremy Brown, the great writer and scout, sitting to my side. So that'll be next week. And there's a there's a select festival alum right there. Cam Caminetti played in the 14U game. The two-way player, we've seen him hit twice. If he really went on a healthy bike ride, that's how close he is to living here. He could ride his bike from Scottsdale. He's looking to lock this game down. Now, we see him as the hitter. Who is he as a pitcher? He, I think most people consider him a primary left-handed pitcher, although he pitched very little this spring. Uh, for his high school. Uh, he's been up to 96 for us in the past. I think he was throwing mid-90s as a 14-year-old. I mean, he's, he's, he's always been a prodigy with his arm and uh, certainly has grown into the pitcher's body now, but still really a true two-way guy. And it's a chance to see Brendan Lawson again, the Canadian who picked up a base hit, his first opportunity. Singled back in the sixth inning, did Lawson. As he swings through that one, oh, and to the count. Did you say mid 90s at 14? Yes, mid 90s at 14. What? And he's done very little pitching since then. Okay. I think it's something that's just by design almost. You know, the arm strength's there, it's always been there. Woo! But we're not going to go out and throw a lot of innings and abuse it. And when you can throw 96, and he just turned yeah. 17, I think, last week or something. So oh, yeah, it's loose, too. He just kind of leans yeah. back and lets it rip. That is, look, look how relaxed he is. That is a beautiful release. Well, you were talking about how relaxed he is in the batter's box. Yeah. How calm and, look at this. and look at the poise and the timing. That is 
yeah, he does it on both, man. Yeah. This is a ball player right that's, here. That's an, that's an athlete. Ty Southasin has had a good game. He may have his name called. We'll see. That's, a, that's not a bad MVP candidate. As Cade Brown sends that one back to the screen. Kate first pitch swinging, didn't get to talk a lot about him. What a journey he has had. He talks about that sophomore year where he wasn't growing like he thought, got frustrated with the game, and just kept grinding. His dad, Chan, is a legendary high school baseball coach at Parkview High School. And this is a this is a true worker. This is a young man that has earned everything he's gotten, whether it's in the classroom with the 4.16 National Honor Society, or being, quote, unquote, the coach's kid, having to outplay expectations he has earned everything he has gotten. And you've seen him develop a lot, David. I'm guessing he's probably had a thousand at-bats at East Cobb. Yes, he, he has. He's a, he's a presence there. And what you say about being a coach's kid um, holds true there. It's a double-edged sword, really. You know, if you're the coach's kid, you know, the, oh, my coach is, my kid's going to play shortstop or whatever. But it's two ways, especially if you're a coach, the level of Chan Brown at a program like Parkview, you have to be able to play to get on the field. There's no two ways about it. Well, he works a really big walk right there, and we're in a one-run one ball game right here, so that's a big base runner for the East. Yeah, we don't talk about I the scores. That. Yeah, we don't talk about the scores much in this game, but hey, you, you want know. guys they to do. find a way to that's win. That's the fun thing. Oh, they, they do. do. They, they do. care about this score. And they know that West won last year in, in extra innings, so. Cam and Andy trying to lock this thing down. There's that one just off the plate inside. He is a family relative to the late Ken Caminetti, and certainly all that Ken did before his tragic passing, they are very proud to wear that Caminetti name. Two good baseball names here, Caminetti and Sheffield, as that's hit on the ground. Could do it, there's one on the first, and he dig it out, he did! It's a double play, and the West wins it. Wow, what a play at first. The beautiful scoop by Al Kai Kaya's West team celebrate oh no and they, oh. they're going for the pool they were told not to I, I think there's security out there they might get rejected <laughs> yeah now you could see nope, them out nope, there nope, they're, oh. these kids are gonna try to go around anyway they might. who's our leader there no nope, they're told no 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 uh, they went for it the nope. PG All-American Classic and the West team is victorious here is the double play. Hunter, what a way to end it. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, two guys that have baseball in their blood, Sheffield versus Caminetti, and nice smooth turn two. Look at him pick it as well. Bang, bang, Sheffield hustling. Walk off double play. How about a catcher over there at first? Al Kai Kea with a beautiful scoop. And he made that beautiful scoop on Ty Southseen's unbelievable play as well, or that wouldn't have been a a successful, outstanding play. I think we've got a fun MVP, a man who had to do special things at National. I think we got it right. Ty Southasine is coming in. I may, I think. Did Ty Southasine win that MVP? They'll get Gonzo out there. Let's see if it's official. Danny, go for it. Danny, did Ty win it? D, thank you so much. I am so excited to announce the Dix of Sporting Goods All-American Classic MVP presented by our honorary chairman, Luis Gonzalez, to Ty Southasine. Three times Select Fest alum. How special is this moment for you? Uh, it's a special one, you know, uh, I went to three, never won until now. Um, I actually got my first hit today, too, and, you know, it's just, it's great, you know. You know these guys, and you've been knowing them for about four years, six years now, and, you know, these great people, you know. I like, you know, me personally, I love being around great souls, and, you know, every single guy, all 60 guys here are just great souls, and, you know, I, it's not about winning this, it's not about getting the gear, you know. All these guys, man, you know, these great people. And, you know, I met I met a couple guys I'll be brothers for life with. We've talked a lot about what it's taken for you to get here and and where you're at. You have so much confidence, but I know that you've, you've been working on a lot for your game. To get to this game, you showed out at National. Speak to what work you've put in on your game. Um, you know, being undersized, you're just blessed. You know, you, you put in the work and, 
You know, I really wouldn't be here without my parents, though. You know, I just want to give a shout out to my parents. Um, it's it's not. I didn't just put in the work. My parents put in the work behind it, and you know, I'm just really blessed to have such a great parents and great brothers. And you know, I really, I this award, this year, it wouldn't happen without my parents. So, no matter how much work I put in, it's all it's all about my. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Great job, Danny, by the way. Yeah, outstanding. What a, I think we're still going. Are we still going on the interview? Oh, I think Let she's still going. Let yeah. me grab one more. I basically avoided it. Hey, one more, because you're talking about your family and all these guys around here cheering your name. What are your brothers meant to you? I love my brothers to death. You know, it, they mean the world to me. You know, I, I, you know, just like I said about my parents, I really wouldn't be here without my brothers, too. Those guys push me every day, and... They show up every day, you know, uh, every single one of them, you know, if you ask them to do anything, they got me, and I know they got me. So I just want to shout out my brothers, shout out my mom, my dad, my aunties, my grandmas, my grandpa. I love all of them, and I appreciate y'all to death. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Danny. D? Yeah, great job tonight, Danny. All the stuff you did down there, our entire production team, an incredible job. I mean, really, it's an honor, whether it's the Steve Bantelet production team, or all the work that he has done, the Jason Cardona-led production team as well. Everyone was very strong. David, your scouting team and all the information that was passed along, and then you sitting here in the booth. I think you and I have done about a, a decade worth of these together. And Hunter Pence, we love that you love amateur baseball, man. Thanks for being with us as well. It's been incredible. Absolute honor and pleasure. What a great, great ball game. Exceptional talent. The high school season's going to be a big one. It's going to be a blast. Don't forget the Select Festival. That's our next stop on campus at the University of Tennessee. Celebrate these athletes. And don't forget to download Perfect Game TV wherever you have a smart device, on your wall or in your hand. Danny, David, Hunter, Darren, this is always fun. We'll see you soon at the ballpark. Good night, everyone.